Warning and disclaimer for all audiences, Anime Circuit is an audio podcast containing mature language, possible spoilers, and opinions that are not your own. Enjoy. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to episode two of Anime Circuit, your weekly anime podcast where I, Drake, and my other host, Will, introduce yourself. I am, in fact, Will. Yes, he is. Where we... I didn't get offended that time when you entered me. <laughs> making progress. Where we uh, review five weekly shows episodically, and... Our original intention was weekly to also review a full series, but when we started watching uh, Yaw- I- Yawamushi Pedal, Yawamushi Pedal, we realized that 38 episodes in a week is kind of fucking impossible. Like by the time we got episode one up, we had three days to watch 38 episodes. Yes, and also, uh, as you can hear, I have a fucking better mic this time. So anyone who couldn't bear to listen to last week's episode, <laughs> I'm going to make this a long story short. Both of us liked Fate Zero, but thought it had terrible pacing, and every show that was, like, the premiere of was... It was pretty awesome. Yeah, it, it, was, it was it was pretty legit, but they were still kind of premieres, and, and, and not much really happened. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, anyway, since we're not doing our weekly show, we thought we were just going to... Uh, Talk about normal airing stuff in the season that we're not going out of our way to review. Just as a short little, hey, we like this. It's kind of okay. But yeah, yeah. Our, our other anime that aren't our select five. Uh, I, I, that I, we're still watching. Yeah, yeah. That we're still watching. Uh, personally, I, I I took little little quickies on, and, and so did Will. Yeah. <laughs> I'm watching literally all but two shows at this point. Yeah. Uh... Oh, and Psycho Pass Two. I'm. I haven't finished season one yet. So once I finish season one, I'll be watching season two of Psycho Pass Two as well. I have. I. Just, I still struggled to get into Psycho Pass. I watched like uh, episode one of the re-edit, and then episode two is. I still struggle all over again. It was. I don't know. <laughs> I. I love the second opening to Psycho Pass. Is the <laughs> nothing's carved in stone? Is, is such a a weird band. It's like, we're a Japanese band. Yeah, all our songs are in really bad English. I'm okay like, with that, as long as it's not TK. I mean, I don't know what people see in him, because I fucking hate him. I fucking hate him so much. It's like, ah, no. ah, I'm like, shut up. <laughs> I enjoyed, um, uh, Ling Tostite Seguir, however that, TK, whatever. I, I don't care to try and pronounce that name anymore. Yeah. All right, but like nothing, no, nothing's carved in stone. It's just a fun band. They did the opening for Blast of Tempest too. Yeah, no one opening well, one. But yeah, I, two I, I, as I, in I, as well. Oh, oh, okay, okay, yeah. But they did the first opening for Blast of Tempest, yeah. and, and it, was, it was pretty fucking sick. And I have a lot of spirit inspiration. I have a lot of their songs. Uh, I quite love them. I quite love them a lot. Not all of their songs are in English, by the way. No, they're not. No, not all of them. Like if I think the, the songs that tend to get featured are. But uh, if you listen yeah. to like their full albums, there's there's jamming and stuff. Yeah, spirit, inspiration, and out of control are, con- are like entirely in English, and it's kind of amazing. Well, Blast of Tempest kind of deserved it, I think, since that's a very en- was, that's a very English show. Still, it was still pissed Shakespeare? off. Anyplex, still pissed off that that didn't get a dub. Fuck you. That should get a dub. Blast of Tempest is a show that could pull off a dub. I want it. I want. I want it dubbed in a way that it's like Funimation's dub for Romeo X Juliet. I haven't seen Romeo X Juliet. It's, it's 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 just very it's very Shakespearean, where where the yeah. where the Japanese they they speak in, uh, very modernized, um, you you know it's it, they they it's it's very Shakespearean in, in in the dub like they talk in like in that actual time period. Ah, uh. that sounds weird. I I, anyways, I enjoyed it. Is there anything you want to lead off with? Uh. Yeah, why don't we... I, I don't have nearly as much as you, so I think <laughs> everything I'm going to list is, is going to hit your list, so I'll just go first. Um, I'll start with, I think, what Will and I butt heads most on is uh, Yushino Warete Mirai Wo Moto Mate. Oh, that show. Yeah, all right, you know what? I don't, I, don't like I don't have much to say about it. I only saw the first episode, didn't have time to get to the second, but I liked it. 
I can say that the uh, second season, the second episode, had significantly less awful CG. Yes, I. It was I, much I, I, I noticed the very awkward clash with like. 2D and, and 3D models, and funny enough, even when I look at the promotional art, the main heroine still looks like she has like a 3D face. I think it's just how yeah. she's designed. With... It's like just that one character's got the weird blend. It's like, are you trying to insinuate something about it? About like her character being different than everyone else's by making her an entirely different art style. That's what it looks like. I mean, uh, episode two was better than episode one, but. Not that much. Uh, well, yeah. Like I said, haven't seen episode two. But, hey, it, it, it caught my curiosity, all right? I mean, you, you knew something was up the second, like, you got the love confession in the first episode, which which, yeah, never, it's like, which never leads to good results. <laughs> you're you're, you're going to die. You confessed your love in episode one. Yeah, you're dead. You're you're going to die. You br- you broke the cycle. And then time resets or something. I don't know. I don't what the fuck yeah happened. and then, it's and weird then, and then, like alien girl shows up it was it was a it was a lot of what the fucks and i kind of <laughs> i kind of want to see those what the fucks answered i mean it, it caught my interest even if it is a little um i don't want to say hair of me but like more than one girl is interested in the male yeah so i mean it, it could have a love triangle love square thing going on maybe at least it's not uh pa works maybe a, a love dodecahedron as the great TV tropes name for the trope is. I mean, Pierre Works wasn't always that. I mean, that's that's what disappoints me. I mean, I know they started that way, kind of with like two tears, but I mean, they moved on pretty quickly. Oh, I have a I have a good uh, PA Works rant building up. And then, 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 then from then, their then current they came show. Back. Uh, I don't I don't understand why they went back. I mean, they were they were good when they were making shows like Another and Angel Beats and stuff like that, you know, when, and uh, Uchi Tenkazuku, which is my favorite thing that they've made, which had no romance in it whatsoever. I heard that, um, that Nagi no Sakata was good, but I got four episodes in and I just stopped watching for some reason, I can't remember. I got one episode in and I had enough. I was like, oh my god, just stop, st- stop complaining about you being in the fucking friend zone. It's, 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 it's annoying. <laughs> I distinctly remember that, and that was incredibly annoying. Now, I am aware that stuff does kind of start happening in Nagi no Asakura, much to my surprise, like something about like the yeah. like a, like a goddess and, and the world freezing over and stuff. So I, I guess yeah. stuff does happen in Nagi no Asakura, but <laughs> eventually, but God knows I'm not interested. I, I'm looking at my list on the uh, Hummingbird app, and um, I'm just looking at Glass Love. It's like yeah. That was my first full PA work show. One star. Glass lip? Yes. That was my your... first full PA work show. It was? No, no, I saw Angel Beats, but mm, that was... Does Angel Beats count as a PA work show? Yes, I would count it as a PA work show. Mm. I, mean, I didn't know it was PA works when I watched it. Glass lip was the first show I identified as a PA works show when I watched it. All right, does that sound better? Yeah, yeah, that works. Uh, anything else you want? To, anything else you want to say about that long title? Um, no, not really. I mean, I guess uh, this is probably like the first anime feel has ever made that I've ever actually given even the slightest damn about. So, uh, <laughs> so this is their time to make a good first impression on me. I hope they don't fuck it up. You know, I'm just going to let you lead this entire section since uh, I'm watching everything. I'll sh- c- chime in if there's anything you didn't mention that I want to talk about. Uh, okay. Um, I guess next I'll do Seven Deadly Sins. Oh, you started watching that? Yes, I did. Uh, don't know if I'm going to continue, but, mm-hmm. but, but there, there's, there's special circumstances under which I watched it, right? So, like... Netflix licensed this, kind of like how they licensed uh, Knights of Sidonia, so that means we're going to wait 24 weeks and or more, you know, before this even legally airs. So yeah, this is one of, be dumb. So this is one of the few times that uh, I went back to fan subs, <laughs> even though it's kind of a technical argument that Crunchyroll is fan subs. Uh, they were originally. And they still kind of are. They just buy out fan sub groups. But, um, yeah, so, uh, every time, like, I hear about this series, 
or I, I look at its manga, or its art, or like its premise, like it's it comes across as something so goofy, something so lighthearted, especially for like the title of Seven Deadly Sins. But every time like I hear about it, like what's actually going on currently, because like I listen to uh, podcasts that keep up on Seven Deadly Sins, and it always sounds so fucking dark every time. But every time like I look at it at myself, I'm like, what? Where do I keep getting this fucking information from? <laughs> like what? It's like probably what? just because you're in the beginning of it. Yeah, I, I, I guess. Um, That's how most series go. I believe, I believe TV Trip refers to it as Cerberus Syndrome. I don't, I don't know what the fuck that is. It's like when a show is like really lighthearted and and happy first, like beginning. I think it's really dark later on. They call that Cerberus Syndrome. All right. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, the the uh, the only uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it getting dark. I hope it gets there. Some things about it still seem kind of goofy, like the fucking portable giant pig, and and like the main and like the main character <laughs> being so, so the main character being so short. And I don't mind him being short, but when you saw like the seven deadly sins themselves, and you saw like the, the tiny guy in the armor, like in the very middle, and I was yeah. I was just like. What? What is this goofy looking thing that I'm looking at right now? Like everyone else is like terrifying and awesome and such like and a midget. And then you have yeah, yeah, yeah and then you got a midget basically. Um also what the fuck happened to Hiroyuki Sawano? Oh god, I'm like is he actually doing the music for this? This is his worst soundtrack ever. I you can even tell it was Hiroyuki Sawano doing it. No. It just sounded like the guy who did a uh, fairy tale soundtrack. I j- I just this doesn't sound like him. It sounds like a rejected soundtrack by him. It's so like it's not awful. Like I I can listen to it, but it just it's so bland and it like fades into the background and and you don't give a shit. <laughs> like occasionally, like I just I'll sing a munching fairy tale because some of the m- the music like the like um almost like Celtic sounding music you use for some of the scenes. It's like, hey, that's a fairy tale soundtrack. What are you guys doing? A1, what are you doing? Don't reuse the soundtrack. A1, stop ruining everything. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, I forgot. A1. I forgot about something in, in my notes. I'm going to talk about what? this. All right. I'm going to finish up on Hiroyuki Sawano, though. I don't think he's even... Be- Everyone like tends to praise like uh, Guilty Crown as like his best soundtrack. I don't, I don't like Guilty Crown soundtrack. I don't like Guilty Crown soundtrack either. I don't think he's been good since Blue Exorcist, personally. But I okay, no, I take that back. I don't think he's been as good as Blue Exorcist. That was his peak back in 2011, and I don't think he's been as good since then. His last, his his last really really good soundtrack was Attack on Titan. Kill, I like Kill Kill, Kill, Kill soundtrack. Kill, I, soundtrack I like. I admit it was weaker. But I liked it. I, I liked. There are a few songs there that I, are great. I, I thought it fit. I thought the 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 tone of the soundtrack was going for it. I liked. It. I liked the very rock theme it had going for it. And, and like some of the like electro electro music and, and it, some of the and the like uh, ping pong circulate. And uh, I think my body is dry is overrated. But Blumenkraz. Blumenkraz was great. Was so fucking amazing. But uh, no, before my body is dry is not overrated. It's just like overhyped. Not overrated. I, I mean, it's, a, it's still a good song. It's just not like. Oh no, I don't like it at all. And I like it. Um. And then, oh, what would what, what he do after Kill a Kill? I'll know zero. I'll know zero. Yeah, I'll know zero. I didn't like either. It has like two good songs. Two. The, way too heavily reliant on insert songs was my problem. Oh yeah. Was like there was basically no actual definition of like what made Hiroyuki Swano Hiroyuki Swano because it was fucking breathless. Fucking keep on keeping on, and yeah. basically every other fucking song, it's every other fucking insert song in in that show just just played over and over and over again. I can't remember the name of the, the really awesome one uh, that always played whenever something bad happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, mm, mm, iTunes, iTunes, help me out. Uh, I know the occasional ending theme was called. It was, it was, it was, it was oh, oh yeah, yeah. Like the the two ending themes were uh, were A Z and like Elise, Elias. I don't, I don't know. A Lizy. Yeah, yeah, A Lizy, right? Um, 
which is really good. I actually also like the opening. Um, blue, was it? No, no, that blue's destiny. Uh, what was it? It's on here, my list somewhere. Heavenly Blue, uh, by Califena. No, I don't. Like, I, I think, I think the fucking. Um, Okay, are you thinking of the theme that's like uh, with like when the ships dropped and like kind of like burnt up the entire Earth? Are you thinking of like that one? Because that's yeah, that one. Because that that, so. that is a lies. Oh, it is. Yes, I thought they were similar because he's got a. There's, thing there's like, two. There's two different versions of it. Yeah, that, he's got two like two different versions of the songs. Yeah, there's there's fucking the Mika Kobayashi version and then there's the uh, I I Mizuki I think her name is I yeah, I, I, I just I just call her NZK. Because like that's I, I think that's what she was credited credited as until Loud No Zero came up. And there's some other song that plays that I like. Whenever like the heroes actually start doing good stuff again and aren't getting destroyed. Yeah, I mean that that's basically like breathless, keep on keeping on, no differences, uh the music. Before right. my body's dry. Um uh, They're looking heroes. Like I can name like most songs on on Tag on Titan soundtrack that were great. There was, um, people, there was people are gonna give me DOA. Weird, people are going to give me really weird looks, but my favorite song in uh, the Attack on Titan soundtrack was, uh, was Army Go. I can't remember that one. What I love about it so much is it kind of sounds like, uh, it, it sounds Arabian. <laughs> mm. That's what I love about it so much. Like, the, the really good songs from Attack on Titan soundtrack were DOA, They're Looked in Heroes, Bucklots. I don't like MPI. I don't. Which one was that? Like, we're like reluctant heroes. Oh, uh, I liked it. And then, um, Call Your Name. I liked Hello of Sorrow. It's the only MPI song that I, I liked. I hear you, Kisawano, from the Guilty Crown soundtrack. Uh, Call Your Name is like the best song. Like, that that song made me love the Boulder arc and Attack on Titan. Like, everyone hates that. It was like, four episodes to move a boulder. I'm like, but you gotta hear Call Your Name at the end of it. The Man, only it thing I liked about that Boulder arc was because uh, was, was when an EMA played uh, and as, as Aaron walked in with the Boulder. And I think that, no, was, that was, I, I think that was the song that played the one that's like the, the one that kind of has like that build up just like the dun 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 dun, dun, dun or something. I don't, I don't know what it's No, I'm pretty sure it was um, Wait, was, it, was it did it just open up on Call Your Name? It might have. Yeah. Okay, never mind then. It's like that's like some of my favorite, one of my favorite trope. Then I don't know when like, the EMA played, but EMA is probably like the my, really dramatic song. scene happening. The first half of it. It's like my favorite. That's one of my favorite tropes. Like when the scene's just quiet and really dramatic music plays over, as all of this cool stuff happens. It's like I remember that scene was like, there was like it was like muted. As Aaron was carrying the boulder, and it was just you heard call your name. It's like, that's amazing. I loved it so that scene so much. <laughs> yeah, don't don't want to turn this into the Hiragi Sawano podcast though. Oh yeah, you know, I, I like I, I like that the fact that we're making this a discussionary podcast. I mean, yeah, that's what we want to do different mana cast. Yeah, it's not. Let's not talk about that. Yeah, so any so anyways, mana-cast. okay. Uh, let's talk about. I don't know the Japanese title for this. Your lie in April. Uh, let me look for it. I'll get the Japanese name for it. This was an A1 picture show. Shigatsu wa Kimi no Uso is the Japanese title for that show. Okay. I didn't like it. I didn't like it either. I'm not gonna. Yay, wa- I'm someone not, who I'm doesn't not, I'm not gonna love it. watch it. Oh my! I but here's the, here's here's some things I want to say about it. Okay. First of all, the art style. Not the, both the art style and the animation. I think this is the best like A1 Pictures has ever looked, and and it kind of awed me that like A1 Pictures c- can actually impress me this much because I've never liked A1 Pictures art, not until now. And this show. I don't like the animation on the noses, which looks hideous. It looked like Guilty Crown to me. Guilty Crown didn't have awful looking noses, did it? Mm, it's been like two years since I watched no, Guilty Crown, so I can't no, remember. The, the, the noses, at times, I think actually kind of looked like a. Uh, they, they, they kind of look like Eden in the East noses. <laughs> I haven't seen Eden in the East either. But um, but but no, like 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 the the, the eyes, the hair, the mouths, you know, you know everything that that actually affects the expression. It reminded me of yeah. Guilty Crown, and I love Guilty Crown's art. 
I don't like Guilty Con, but I love its art. And I love the art here. And A1 Pictures was actually really impressing me here. And I've never liked an A1 Pictures show besides Shinsekai Yuri. Shinsekai Yuri is amazing. Still had terrible art, though. And I was hoping maybe I can get a really, really, really good A1 Pictures show and really, really good art to boot. <laughs> Everything went downhill you pick and choose. really fast. Oh, yeah. Okay, so first of all, the main character is really fucking emo. When he was like, "Oh my god, I don't have color," I, th- like, I thought they were. I thought it was gonna be really literal and like he was gonna be colorblind. And I was like, "Oh, that's an interesting character trait." Yeah, but then, it's like. But then no, he was just depressed that he lost his mother. All right. It's like, and then they talk. Why about, is he depressed? His mom. His mom beat him. No, no, he's saying, for, he's to play the piano. Like child abuse, right? All right, we don't see that too much in anime. It's it's not. No, we see that a lot. Anime, but but it's it's. We it's, see a lot of child abuse in anime. It's like, oh, this guy needs to have a bad backstory. His parents beat the crap out of him. All right, we're good. Yeah, but but usually usually like like it's really cheap, right? And I have a feeling that show yeah. this this show is gonna do something more with it. I think that's gonna be a central focus of it. But no, you could see that the kid was bleeding. Yeah, I like, mean, yes, it, it, because, because I'm pretty sure you so would have called CPS more, by that because, by then because it's so much more harsh, and because he's not just being pointlessly beaten out of like just random anger outbursts, right? Yeah. Like, like he's he's being driven to a goal. Like, like, I find this kind of uh, child abuse interesting. Uh, not, like, as in, like... I Let's see, not take that out of context. Let's not take that out of context. I'm just saying... <laughs> I find this kind of child seeing, abuse interesting. Seeing it in fiction... I, yeah, I, I, I want it to be addressed more maturely than anime tends to do, right? Yeah, I know what you mean. Never really spent the time on that, though, besides actually just saying it's there. Yeah, it isn't shit available. And, and I'm not interested yeah. enough in seeing any further in, in what happens with it because the romance of this show oh god instantly turned me off <sighs> it was really cute when it started because it was like and the, hey, she was like playing with the little yeah, kids like, this girl's playing with the little kids and I'm like, yeah, that was, he that was, was about to take a picture and i was gonna be like oh this is gonna be like a really sweet photo and then i was like oh, oh man them, like, like a-, a one pictures like you, what are you doing you don't make cute things you make things that are derogatory like and, and then wind blows. I'm like, and wind blows. I hate you, A1. Snows, blows up the skirt. He takes a picture. She gets mad. And the rest of the episode is literally just her being a Sundari and being the crap yeah. out of being the crap out of him for slapstick comedy. And you I said, was, that was that so was an accident. And pissed off. I was like, you just you, you ruined everything. You ruined it. <sighs> you She's like, such a potential. Saying. I wanted to fucking strangle something. Uh. I wanted to kick a puppy. Like, it was just... <laughs> uh. Uh. I'm going to keep watching it and see if I get any more rage from it. And I'll let you know. Uh. You got anything else you want to talk about this season? I'll correct myself. I got one or two uh, shows I want to bring I'll up. I'll correct myself. A1 Pictures doesn't really make stuff that's derogatory. Right? That's, all I kind of, that's all I really have to say about Sword Art Online. It's, it's just, Sword. when they make shows, it's just usually really, really poorly written. Oh uh, yeah. Or they, they choose to adapt poorly written stuff with their poor as fuck animation, and uh, it's I hate them. I hate them so much. All right. Um, I haven't started watching this yet, but I'm really interested in Sora No Method because it's written by Naoki uh, it, Hisaya, it, it, and this that's the writer of Sola, and Sola is one of my favorite animes. And, Never seen Sola, whatever and, and, that is. And, and Sola is certainly in competition. I'd have to think about it again. Uh, but it used to, once upon a time, be, like, my favorite anime ending of, of all time. So, I really love Solo, wow. and I really want to watch Sword No Method, because it's the same work by the same author. Uh, it's a good show so far. Uh, like, Oh, what? yeah, 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 you, you go ahead. Say what you want. It's pretty good so far. There's, seem, there's like, some weird magical element, like... Well, yeah, there, there there usually is like like Sola kind of dealt. I don't know why it didn't I, it didn't say vampires, but it was fucking vampires. But it came up with like its own fucking term for it. Yeah. But but it was it was it was it was basically ghouls. like the main the main character had to take it wasn't even ghoul like it was something I've never heard before. Like I think it was specific to the show itself. Man. Um, and it was it was it was basically like this guy, you know, basically has to take care of this girl who can't step into the sunlight. Uh, and then she's being hunted by like this priest or something, and it's 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 a romance. So a vampire. Yeah, but it's it's it's, <laughs> it's it's a romance with a really dark twist to it, and in an extremely 
amazingly bittersweet ending that just awed me when it happened because I was like, this this ending's amazing. Um, hmm. So, I mean, I'm going to check that out someday. Yeah, I mean, I, I really suggest Sola. Two more shows on my list, all right? All right, uh, I'll let you take them. Parasite. Parasite was amazing. Parasite, best premiere of the entire that season so far. That was a so great far. premiere. Still not regretting that it's not on this list. I am assuming that it's going to work its way slowly but surely into Shonen Battle type stuff. Uh, and, yeah, and, I, and, I, and I won't care to blog it. Even though I'm still going to be super hype every time a fight happens. Uh, the opening. Yeah. The opening. Okay, I don't like it that much. I love Fear and Loathing Las Vegas, but they've done better. I mean, but Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas never do an opening. I was so happy to hear it. I'm like, I'm listening to it, I'm like, tapping along to be hearing it, like, I know this band. I know this band. And like, it hit me right before the vocals hit. I just start headbanging when the, when the vocals hit. I'm like, yep. No, 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 no. My, my, my two favorite openings this season are World Triggers. Solely for the song, the animation is still kind of lazy and, until it gets like to like the montage of like all the side characters. I, I don't mm-hmm. know why they got more budget than like the main cast, but they did. <laughs> and then, so, but like the song is really great. Um, and, and then, then Bahamut. And Shingeki no Bahamut's opening is <sighs> fucking sick. That's, a, that's an amazing it. opening theme. Um, okay, so, so basically. Shingeki no Muhammad, this is the stuff I have the most notes on. First of all, to me, when I saw the first episode, I watched the second one as well. It was like, it was like anime Pirates of the Caribbean. Like, I don't... I'm yeah, like, I, I I don't even like Pirates of the Caribbean, but I'm like, this feels like anime Pirates of the Caribbean, yeah. It does, said. like, like the main character reminds me of, like, Captain Jack Sparrow. There's, there's like, enough mysticism yeah, really, going on in, like, in, like, the really old setting, you know? That, for that, it to that, work. For it to work. And, and, like, um... And, 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 you know, there's, like, a noble dude who's, like, hunting the pirate, you know, in this case, you know, hunting, like, the, the bounty hunter, and, like... Even though he's a bounty hunter as well? Yeah, if I, but he, he was not supposed to be a bounty hunter. Yeah, it looks like uh, Favreau did something to get rid of his nobility. But, but even in the second parts of the Caribbean, I, I forget the guy's name, but I think even he became a temporary pirate, didn't he? And then, like, and then like even, like, the first episode had, like, a fight... On the wheel. On a water mill, rolling down a street. I'm just like, this is totally Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was great. It was amazing. Um, also, Shigeki no Muhammad has best girl of this season. Yes, I, I will agree with that. I, she is best girl of the season. I don't remember if it's Arima or Amira. Amira. Uh, Amira. Her name is Amira. Yeah, yeah uh, Amira. Uh, yeah. Amira, she's so fucking adorable. Like, in the first episode, <laughs> yes. she was, like, frightening. <laughs> And I was like, dude, this chick kicks ass. But in the second episode, like, when she started, like, developing more, like, uh, human characteristics, you know, like... Yes. When, like, like, when, like, uh, when she started... She wanted to eat the duck? Yeah, yeah like, 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 when she, like, wanted to eat the duck and, like, uh, when she was, like, <laughs> dancing, you know, went swimming, you know, got drunk. Like, like, her, her facial expressions, like, got so cute and so happy. I was like, you are adorable. And you still kick ass. You, were, you are and amazing. And you cut a, a goat demon in half, like... 20 minutes, like, five minutes ago. No, you, you punched a demon into a sword. Like, she didn't cut it in half. She yeah. had it cut she itself punched in half. into like, a it was, sword. It was amazing. You cut him in half. It was, it was, it was, was amazing. so amazing. So cool. That had to be a really fucking sharp sword, though. I'm, yeah. I'm surprised, like, the forest didn't just knock it over. <laughs> but, um, uh, I, I, the final note I kind of had on this is... The second episode was a little bit deeper than I expected it to be because of how much changed, uh, how much yeah. was going on, and even like one of like the knights dudes kind of looked like he had like the same neck it, the uh, same necklace yeah, as, he... as as Amira. So and... it's like there there might be something going on there, and then it got me so curious that I really really wish we chose this as a show to report. On. Yes, I I wish that too. And my favorite part is like Favreau, like he's a jerk. Like he was about to like murder just like. I mean, I don't want to do this. So yeah, no, but like, 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 I got it though, because I was kind of like in support of like the way he was thinking, I, solely because of I think of like the day and age that it's set in. I think if it was yeah. more modernized. I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? But, <laughs> but it's like, like considering this is all about you know like like demons and knights yeah, and, like, and and warriors and you know and stuff like that. And I'm just like, bring on the bloodshed. Like he was like, I mean, I don't want to take her to some like icy wasteland in the north. I'll just kill her now. I mean, he did just see her transform into a demon and murder a goat demon, but 
I mean, he still wanted to take a chance at killing her, apparently. That go demon weirded me out because it's like its art was very different when it was like still part of the background and like within yes, like the like... same scene, like it changed from like background art to like foreground art, and yeah. it was it was actually incredibly jarring. Like when it happened, it took from the Dragon Ball Z school of animation where you can tell what rock will blow up next from how detailed it is. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, but it kind of, like, lost the detail when it got to the foreground art. And then, like, my point is, like, it was all within, like, the same scene. I saw the camera's on it, and it fucking moves. And it instantly, like, the coloring on it just shifts. And I'm like, yeah, that, that was whoa, really like, like in, in, the, in the blink of an eye, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but, you have anything uh, else you mean? No, 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 that's about it. So, I mean, in case if, 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 if we ever end up dropping anything, and I don't want to for the sake of integrity... Uh, but if yeah. we ever end up dropping anything or find room to to add Shingeki no Bahama into the list, we we'll be oh yeah, I'll definitely add that. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely do that. I think I have like one show, like one rant, one show. Um, just looking, just looking through my list. Okay, two rants. Uh, yeah, two rants. Alright, the, the one show I want to talk about is Garo. Have you been looking at that? Uh, that's also by Mappa right now, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Garo Hono no Kokuin. I know of it. I don't know what it is. It's like set in like another medieval fantasy kind of setting. But apparently it's like adapted from a really? Tokukatsu Cause, series. Cause, uh, when, I, when I first saw the art, it kind of looked like... Kind of looked like it looked like to me. It kind of looked like Captain Harlock or like Medocia space pirates. Like I just it looked it looked like space pirates. I don't yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know why. Yeah, I think it was just in the lead's design when I saw it. And I was yeah, like the, like the buttoned up coat. Yeah, yeah, was, that looks like I've seen art for Captain Harlock, and that kind of looks like his jacket. That that's what, that's, like, that's what caught my attention. Uh, from what I've gathered from the first two episodes, was like people were branded as witches. And they were like fighting demons called horrors, and like the I look at that from Tokukatsu series. Like it's like the armor, the the well CG'd armor was like used to fight these like demon things. It was like after like a, a year long witch hunt, and the horrors are like walking the land. It's actually it's like a really good show. Like there was a character. It's like. Oh yeah, another damsel in distress trope. Like, they think they were gonna save her. It's like she's like, well, thank you for doing something completely unneeded. She just breaks like uh, the handcuffs and goes and kills the guy she, that had held her captive. It was just like one of the most am amazing things I've seen. Like you thought it was just going for a standard, the damsel in distress. It's like she didn't need to, she didn't need their help. She just killed the guy on her own. Alright, so is that it? Yeah. Alright, so Gara recommendation from Will. What else? Um, I rent for Shiro Bako. Oh, this will be fun. Oh, that show. PA yeah, works is I'm very not, I'm not, low I'm, in I'm, my... I'm not touching that with a 10-foot pole. I'm going to be entirely honest. PA works is not doing themselves any favors, as they're currently one of my, my least favorite studios. Shiro Bako is a show about the anime industry. Which, well, yeah, like, we got a good. Until it falls to pieces within five minutes. Why is it... Why is it girls? Uh, from the first episode, apparently they were in an animation club in high school. And decided they wanted to go into the industry afterwards. And so, like... Within the first five minutes, we see them, like, the five girls in a club room. And then graduation, three of them graduate. And then we see two of them again. It's like, you're telling me that, like... A six-year time skip, and then two of them are working in, in like uh, some animation studio. I can't remember what the name of it was. It's like, um, like okay, what happened to like the other three characters? You know, like it didn't even mention them. Fuck them. I mean, it had a funny cut to production IG and JC staff. I mean, like. Yeah, I heard. The, I, I heard about that. They were, they were it's like GI staff yeah. was on some dude's car. I was like, oh, all right, that was clever. But, um, like, it introduces, like, 20 characters under a minute. 
Like, no joke. 20 characters under a minute. And it expects you to know their names. Like, the next yeah, scene. Yeah, well, fucking girlfriend did too, alright. You know, I watched that much, oh. much, much, <laughs> to, much, much <laughs> to my own regret. It was regret. awful. I was, hoping, it was... I was hoping it would be so bad it would be amazing because it's like, I already expected it to be horrendous. But it was yeah. just boring bad. It, it, was, it, was, it wasn't so bad it's good. It was just boring. Horribly, horribly boring. Like, it introduces, like, 20 characters at once, gives you their positions, and, like, a hobby. Like, I'm not gonna remember this. Yeah, so... At all. So, so bring that back to, uh, Shirobako. It's uh, like, and, like, the next scene, they're, like, referring to them by name. It's like, I don't know who these people are. <laughs> don't refer to them by name. Tell me. Introduce them now, when you're looking for them. It's like... And they're using nicknames. It's like... I don't know these nicknames. Who are you people? What's going on? Yeah, too much information at once. And then there's like not enough information. It's like it expects you to know the ins and outs of the anime production industry. It's like I know it gets the art is like the line art's done. It gets filled in, voice acting, and then it's put together. It's like all I know. I just really need to know exactly each individual step to make it. Like I don't know this. See, 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 here's, here's the thing that gets me is, I'm probably never going to watch this, if only because it's like the reviews I hear about it are just that mixed. So, or, or, or more like the, the, con, like the, the, the... Consensus. Yeah, I guess like, the, the consensus that is f for it, so I mean, I guess that's not a general consensus, but it's like, the side of the argument that is for it never really raises a good argument. It's just like, it's about making, it's, an it's, it's about making anime. And then, I'm, I'm kind of going off uh, Seventh Style's review for it since I mean I I follow Seventh Style pretty pretty majorly. I even though I hate referencing them as a source because like they get so much news wrong. <laughs> but um, but uh, but like they're very critical, right? <laughs> and and so, and so something that kind of like they made a good point of and and that I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna speak for them. Not, 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 not gonna speak for myself, but th this makes a really good point. Are they ever gonna like fuck up and not be okay? Because this is a slice of life show about cute girls making anime, right? Yeah. So it's like. Oh, also, I forgot to mention. It, it can, they have a heavy case of same face syndrome. Yeah, thanks, like, I, I look, look at the like, So, like, like, I'm looking at the art like right now. It's like. You all have the same exact these facial structure. These character designs were done by the character designer of My Teen Rom Com Snafu, or Gairu. Wait, right? what? Yes, these were the character designs by him. But Snafu didn't have awful same face. No, it did not. That's why I blame PA Works and their fucking modernization. What well, Gairu was awesome. I'm so hyped for the second season whenever that comes out. Yeah, right, still waiting for that. <laughs> no, they, they announced it. That's coming sometime soon. But, but I, 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 I understood this just looking at the series for the very first time or just even hearing about it. I'm like, it's it's a slice of life about cute girls making anime. All right, you'll give us real-life anime problems, but I won't start watching this show or I won't even be remotely interested until they fail at something. I probably won't care. <laughs> it's yeah, like the first episode they were failing because they got behind for some reason. Yeah, they got behind, but did they catch up? Yeah. Precisely. Sometimes it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes you have to give up. Sometimes you have to make sacrifices. Uh, uh, I can't. I can't really think of a specific anime industry example, but uh, um, like uh, one of the most recent uh, chapters of, of World Trigger uh, as a manga, and I love World Trigger to death. But I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna reference this, you know, as a mistake is is, is that sometimes when you get pushed too hard. Your art doesn't get finished, and you oh, like you've and, seen and, you, and, you, and, you, and you release like the sketch work, right? And so, like one of the most recent chapters of uh, of Real Trigger was literally just sketches. Like it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was the sketched art of all the characters with outlines <laughs> so that you could make them out. But like, wow. but, but like the the sketched skeletons, like they weren't erased. There there was no time to erase. Like you had to get that fucking out there. It was that Have you seen of some week. of the Hunter x Hunter art? I've heard some of it is pretty horrendous. Yes. Like, I don't read the series or watch it, but I can tell the character designs. 
like who's who from like the main cast. It's like there was a scene from like the most recent arc, like I think it's called the the election or something. I can't remember, but like I couldn't tell who was who. It was like uh, Gon and Killua in, in the stands watching something. It's like uh, who's who in this scene? Because this is just scribbles. I couldn't see anything. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've never read Hunter x Hunter, but I really want to just just to see how art how bad the art is and see how yeah. amazing Madhouse is for actually being able to basically fix every art mistake ever made in that entire manga. Because because I hear like the anime looks fucking fantastic. Yeah, from what I've seen, it looks great. I think I'll I'll save my uh, cross Andrew rant for later. Uh, see if it gets worse. Do you kind of want to just do it right now? Because I kind of want to talk about it, too. No, he'll hold off on it, because I might just explode. All right. I mean, I only, make saw, as I, many... only saw, I only saw the first episode, but I think the first episode's all I really need to see. Because the first episode was extremely insulting. And I, as an and anime I, don't, mean, fan. I don't mean insulting as in, like, the way I was, like, insulted by, like, your line April for being, like, wasted potential. And, and, and there was wasted oh, potential. Oh, I was. There was wasted potential in Crossing <laughs> oh, wow, But wasted it's potential. like, this was, like actually offensive to some degrees. What do you mean? I guess we can just go on a cross and rant right now. Uh, we'll have like, one of these weekly. This... Th th there was this idea of, like... racism. But done horribly? Done absolutely horribly. Yes, it was so... It was just, like, the worst way to sh do racism in a, in a series. Which, racism is not usually done well. There's, there's so many specifics to it, though, because I want to talk about the specific yeah. race itself, but we'll save that for the cross Ain't rant day, all right? Yeah. But I wanted to get that out there right uh, there. I just want to make the joke of, I mean, I think you should only do more rapes from some good character development. Yeah, there was the rape scene, though, but I've been decent. And in episode two. That. I've been fucking decent. It's to fucking rape in anime. She got raped again in episode two. Uh, it's like... Do you know how to write a character, or is it just traumatic incident, traumatic incident, traumatic incident? It's Better Sunrise character. being Sunrise, and you know what? Sunrise can't write anything else but politics. I'm going to be entirely honest. They can't do anything but politics, so the second they try to step <laughs> out and try to seem edgy because they're doing something different, or they're doing something really dark that isn't just like an anti-war fucking message. Oh, God. You know, you know like, then Those they, then so they fuck up so bad. Like, all the, like anti-war messages are like oh my god i get it like it was it was good at the time like and, and and it's good every once in a while like they can surprise you but it's it doesn't happen often enough for me to respect sunrise as a studio i hate when it just gets shoved down your throat it's like these are our political views some things are interesting except like them. i really want to watch turn a gundam because it's like turn a gundam kind of has like that like futuristic versus like 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 1800s kind of kind of kind of thing going for it and so it's like i kind of want to see that how, sounds like, awesome. how, like how those two settings clash like that sounds really interesting to me code geass is still one of my favorite animes of all time despite yes how, i love code geass no matter how much we played it code geass is very the the, the, the the what i hold against it is it, it, it's very idealistic yes uh but i thought it was appropriate for the show and so therefore i don't mind it like that's why I'm afraid to go back and rewatch it. It's like I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna notice all the flaws in it. It's like one of my fir the first shows I ever watched. So I'm like, oh, I, I I'm know, like, I know what the flaws are in it. They just they just no, 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 I know what they are now, but like I know if I go back and watch it, I'll, be, I'll put it all, all, all of it myself. It's like I can't watch it and enjoy it. That would be impossible for me. Oh no, I, I can enjoy Pokemon Go any day of the week. Like I said, its flaws don't bother me. They're they're flaws I'm actually kind of in support of. Hmm. I think we've just about covered everything. All right. I just wanted to mention uh, our personal battles for the best opening of the season. Uh, I think we already agreed that it's fucking Bahamut. No, I said Bahamut's in the running for the best. Oh. Okay, well, I guess my running might... But Bahamut's my for sure, but I still like World Triggers too, so that's my top two. World Triggers is pretty good. It's catchy. Like, my top three currently are um, in no specific order. Let Me Hear by Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, Existence by Sim, which was the opening to Bahamut, and World's End, Girls Rondo, which is the opening to uh, uh, Wicker Us this season. It's like, 
I don't, like, I don't know what you've seen in that opening. I don't like it. I personally we, think we were, Killing we Killing Joker, Joker was way better. And, uh, Killing Killing Joker was great. And when, I, I like Killing Killing Joker. Visuals, uh, I don't think the visuals in the second opening are nearly as frightening as the first. No, well, except for that, like one scene right before like my favorite part. No, I know, I, I know what you're getting at when like she gets like encompassed by like her. Car. Yeah. Like, but no, I still don't think that doesn't look nearly as scary as like Thomas' crazy face. Yeah, like, like the, the dragon freaking thing. Yes, that was much more terrifying. But I just want to mention like that one amazing scene when it's just all the characters. I just love that scene in the opening. Yeah, the, the, the little the little vector part. Uh, yes. Where all the, all the characters show up and like vectors and they overlap each other. Segway. Speaking of Wickross, Wickross. Episode two of Selector Spread Wickross. I'm not saying Wixis anymore. I've been finally corrected in that after yeah. how how long this show's been out. So. What? Six months, I believe now. Yeah, I've been saying fucking saying Wixis for six months, but whatever. I'd say it's better than uh fucking me saying Pro for so long. When I figure finally figured out it's Perio. I Wait, what? I, th I think I think it's Perio. You mean Pirate? I think it's Perio. It's, it's, that's the French pronunciation for it. And, yeah. like, and like when I looked it up on Wikipedia, like, they, they, they kind of took, like, that French word because they based it off, like, a fucking clown, and that's why their logo is a clown called Perio. I can make a lot of jokes about that. So, so, and so and the shows that that studio makes. So so they wrote just basically, so, yeah, so basically they, they, they studio took... Studio clown. They took a clown... And then, then, then they they just and wrote, they, like, they wrote their and, and they spelled it with the French version of his name, mm. according to Wikipedia. So, but Wikipedia is not always true. Yeah, I know. So, but I'm I I'm going with Perio. Well, that's when I I, t I looked at like three different Wix dictionary sites and clicked on the fucking speaker oh. and it was like, uh, no 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 it was Piero that's what it was it was Piero Piero Piero, Piero. Oh, so yeah. Studio oh. Piero uh, is fucking making Katsuki no Yona right now. But that's for talking about later. Uh, how did we... Back on Wix's. How did we do that? We cross. Oh my god, I did it again. How, oh yeah, yeah, that's what we got to. He's talking about Piro. But, yeah, like, one thing I put down in my notes, because I have I have a notepad open for all the all five shows that we review. Just a ton of notes for just for me to bring up. Alright, you know what? Wix's? We cross. <laughs> I have nothing. You're going to do that I, a lot, I aren't you? I still have nothing i watched it and like i understood it and i collected the information i'm like aki lovely aki lucky is is aki lovely right now she she got a new fucking yep. l rig i don't know where the fuck it came from but whatever it's like well, i made that joke she's still a notes. crazy bitch i don't know why she's back in the show she seems kind of pointless fucking uh hana was her name i think the, the fucking card that's possessing like the idol bodies now it's like uh, she's she's being very manipulative over Aki Lucky yeah. for some stupid fucking reason. It's and it's I, I still just I still don't know where the show's going. The next episode teased Tama, so maybe we can oh. finally get a point to this. <laughs> maybe we can finally get like one of the main characters back. Yeah right. Uh, like some of my notes are like I remember people like freaking out in that episode one thread about Akira not having the scar. Like, in the opening. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's like. I didn't know how they were gonna fix it, but I figured like it's makeup. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's, it's makeup. That was that like, was mundane. Like she didn't have the scar and the opening, so clearly there would be an excuse. I didn't really care what it was because yeah, I, like, I don't care enough. And like <laughs> people were flipping. And, like, I wasn't like, flipping out, out because it. I was like, the show is not that stupid to not address it. Yeah. Um, I was but like, Yuriko was not playing like with Iona even what? in non-selector matches. Maria Kata, she like she can be bad, but she's not inconsistent. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like something I was like fairly significant was uh, when she played her grandma. And she refused to use Iona. Like, yeah, did you not know. notice that something was kind of significant with that? Huh? Did you notice that something was kind of significant with that? Not uh, using Iona, and even in a non-selector match. Uh. No, sort of, maybe. Like, it shows she's like more traumatized to battle in general, and not just um, the selector matches. So it's just something I saw when I'm watching it. Well, yeah, I mean, I I kind of just got that just from like her facial expressions, really. Like, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't even really need to pay attention to the games that much. 
It was a bit of support for the theory. And, and she kind of even said it out loud, too, because she was like, oh, it's not fun to battle when I'm not fighting with my friends. She said it later in the episode. Yeah, but, I know. Uh, I also put that, like, um, the lyric that's taking over Yuna's body seems to be gathering a team. Something I want, I'm ready to see. I want to see that go down. She's creating a team of selectors who seem to hate the main characters. How many fucking selectors are there in the world? Oh, God. If the first season, if the uh, tournament at the end of season one is to be believed, there's a lot in at least... I think it's there in Tokyo. For uh, set. Yeah, I mean, but like that was just like the local neighborhood, wasn't it? Yeah, like like, like, like just that. So it's I'm like, actually I'm gonna know that too. Like, how common are they? Like the living lyrics in the decks. How common are they? Yeah, I guess like, if two I, characters could become selectors again, just from a random pull. Like every every question I have about the show always still just boils back. It just comes back to the why? same one. Just why? <laughs> why? Why in a, a why game? in a lot of why in a lot of how too. Just like, how do you do this? How did this start? Why is it still a thing? Why has no one stopped it? Yeah. I mean, I mean. Like, apparently, there are not like novels on it, which directly mention all the awful crap that happens. Is this, I don't mind blogging this show. I'm kind of glad we do because it. Because like it's. It's a good yeah. show. <laughs> That's debatable. <laughs> it's, 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 it's just something about it is is is, is addicting yes yeah, i i, I, I will that. agree there but i'm probably always gonna keep ranting until like i get answers to my questions i also noticed in the opening that akira's old whatever those things are called that are hard to pronounce was in the opening so who's akira's I don't know Before she lost I, the first I time. I don't, I don't know these characters by name. It, if, and if I was saying anyone's name last episode, it was because I had Wikipedia pulled up. I don't <laughs> right now. So I just know the main character's name is Ruko. <laughs> and because you said it earlier, Yona is the fucking Elric right now. Uh, I am right about that, right? Yona's the... Yona is, is, is like the Ruko's Elric. Yes. All right. I was trying to make sure that wasn't like. How do you remember names? It's season two. And last season, I directly like last episode. I directly said, if I'm caring enough to watch season two, I remember stuff from season one. I remember <laughs> stuff from season one. You know what happened in season one? Nothing. Like nothing. Season one was Ruko was playing was, the, was was playing the game, playing the game, playing the game, playing the game, saying I'm gonna stop the game. Thomas yeah, says I'm not gonna let you stop the game. And that was the end of season one. And then failing to stop the game. And I guess you've just about covered everything for Wickross. Wickross. Ready to move on? Yep. Alright. Alright. So on to something better. Lock Way Horizon better. Season 2. Lock Horizon Season 2, Episode 2, was such an improvement over Episode 1. I, and I, really I, and I liked it. Episode 1. Except like, for the new character, I didn't, li I didn't like her this episode. Yeah, I was just going to say, Episode 1 just had elements elements of it that was confusing. Yes. This was not confusing. This was actually a whole load of fucking awesome. awesome. So, alright. So, I, I love when it explained the raid mechanics. Because having never played an MMO... I know a little about, um, raiding. See, the thing is, I don't play MMOs, but Lock Horizon Me is still, like, my third favorite anime anyways. Uh, as of season one, season one, I mean, season two could affect the whole big picture and maybe push it back. I don't know. But, like, I was just so blown away by season one. It's so amazing. I don't even play MMOs, but just as a story, as as, as a as, as a political story... Yes. Just take note, Sunrise. Like just <laughs> take as, note, Sunrise. As, as you know, as uh. as the story about politics and and and, and forming this world and you know yeah. keeping up with stuff like fucking money, you know, which is what it's all about right now. You know, is is you know, it's, it's about making the money to fucking keep the uh, council in, in in charge. You know, it's 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 so fucking good, and the way it just does it with video game mechanics is so good. That's I, I, one of my favorite parts was how it explained raid mechanics. Cause, yeah, I've never played MMO. All I know is you get a large group of people to fight a boss. I, I actually love how Shiro just explained all of it. It's like, 
that makes like no sense in context, but I'm okay with it. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, I, I guess he didn't really explain it any better than it is just a bunch of people getting together to fight a boss. But, well, and teams but, but, of but, six. Yeah, but like you took into account like how many people you'd need, and you know, yeah. and, and, and you know what what kind of the reward is, you know. For, you know, what, what's worth it, what isn't, you know, how far do you go in figuring out where you're going to raid, so it's like, oh, we went mm-hmm. so far into the dungeon as to find, like, the slimes, but we didn't go any further because three people can't fucking fight off this many enemies. Slimes. Yeah. <laughs> Most basic of enemies. Yeah, you know, I don't know, I've played, a, I, I've played enough RPGs, like, not really MMOs, but every RPG i played and I fought a slime, they're always fucking hard as shit. Because it's like they're slimy, liquidy, and resistant to fucking attacks because it's like you can't really hit them because they just <laughs> plop. And I'm like, nice. <laughs> yeah, another thing I was but I think I thought I'm was kind of weird. I just think I'm just thinking Final Fantasy, right? Probably. Probably. I think a lot was weird was there's a guy named William Massachusetts on the Japanese servers. Yeah, but William Massachusetts, you know, he was he was in he was invited to the council like the very first. Yeah, time. So he was there. I, I love that. He I was, have that He was too. there before in, in the early part of the series. But you couldn't recognize him cuz Dean changed designs. I probably wouldn't have recognized him anyways cuz it, it's Not been either. so long since we've seen him. But like, I'm what, glad I'm glad they called back to him and I'm glad yes. that he's not an asshole. A jerk. Yes. Yeah. He's like, like he's, yeah, yeah, probably should join, join you guys the back council then. because not because like he's villainous to any degree. He just didn't want to join the council because he didn't want to. It's as simple he as that. He was stupid. Yeah, like if like he wants to go raid, he goes raids. You know, in being in charge of a council, you probably can't raid as much. I get it. Yeah. He wants to do his hobby. <laughs> it's like I have nothing against you guys, but I want to go raid. It's like okay, and you're not jerking. You come back. I'm okay with that. Yeah, right. You're an actual character. He, he, he Development. Is an act- he is an actual character. And and in and and it was thanks to him that we kind of got this uh, this emotional aspect to what death means in Log Horizon because so far yes. up to this point all we really knew was is you lost memories was you lost memories to to which it wasn't really that bad because not that many people died like actually that much, much. you know like but these um, guys are raiding but but, but these guys are you raiding. die a lot so, so they're dying a lot and therefore probably losing a lot more memories not that they recognize it. Uh, yeah. Because the, uh, William even said that's like, oh, I don't believe in rumors, and then he and then he he talks about and, how and, it's like getting told you're worthless and, and something being, like that. Yeah, and, and we know that losing your memories is just a, is just a rumor, right? So what's important about death to him and his like, guild is is that death means loss, defeat, you know, and that and that, and that bears down on you. Yeah, like because like first person, if you got killed. You feel like you got killed. Like, just imagine, I'm imagining feeling that, like, over and over again, raid, raiding bosses. Yeah, it's just, you, That's you, gotta be His example awful. was, you know, it's like, you die 100 times, therefore you go through that depression 100 times. It's, you, you never get over it because you're you're after something, you know, that's the whole point of a raid. Yeah. You have a goal, you want to go get it, and then you can't. I, I'm, I'm related to some good... Uh, development with that. I think there's some potential for uh, uh, a great subplot. This yeah, is, and then this is real life now, right? So it's like there is there is no just restarting and going doing the dungeon again. Like, there's no like getting up and leaving the computer and doing something else. Yeah. Like, oh man, I died. Well, I guess I'll go take a walk or something. Yeah, so, so like, I, lo- I love how there's, there's so many perspectives to Log Horizon's yes. world, and it's it's so good, and, 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 and it showed that example here again today, just in a tavern. You know, it's like, we didn't even yes. really go on, like, any epic journey, really, this episode. Like, we went to a cave and, like, fought a couple of rats or whatever, but it's like... That, that, that was the extent of it. Most of, the, most of the exploration and most of the best part of this episode took place in this, in this in tavern. tavern. You know, it, with this really small conversation that only lasted a couple minutes. Until Demicus showed up. Yeah, until... And, until, and Jiro and, trolled the crap out of him. Yeah. Fucking, that was great. Democracy-san, miso soup son, or whatever the fuck you call him. It's like, like tofu and miso soup? Yeah. <laughs> what he called him? Yeah, so it's... Like, they got, like, food puns with his name. So, fucking... <laughs> that was great. So, fucking Shiro, or Shiroi, uh, I, th- I think it's supposed to be technically not Shiroi, because the E at the end. I called him Shiro, I don't... I don't... I'm not yeah. gonna try to pronounce that E. Yeah, but uh, but uh, Shiroi, because the, I, that's what I was calling him during my episodic reviews when I was mm-hmm. doing this on my channel before we made this podcast. Uh, 
Shiroi, you know, it's he's it's his his chemistry with uh, Demicus is it's it's, great. It, it's yeah, it's it's great. I mean, it's 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 one joke and it's it's one joke that gets so overplayed to the point where like it's funny cuz you know sometimes they say the key to repetition the key to humor is repetition. Yeah. And 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 and, and, it, and it's just it keeps getting funnier and funnier. And actually, I think the joke fell off a little bit when he didn't add Demi at the fucking beginning. Yeah. At the, at the beginning. So when it was like... Like, miso, like food puns. So, so when it was tofu and miso soup, I was like, come on. Like, I understand you're trolling him, but, like, that's honestly a little bit weaker than, like, the better stuff you've came up with that were, like, actual puns on Demicus. Yeah. It's a democracy. <laughs> that was hilarious. It's like the exact opposite of what he was. Demicus was not democratic in any way, shape, or form. Um, Tetra? Oh, God, I, I did not like uh, Tetra. I, I, I like her. I like that she's quirky and, and, and is full of energy. Uh, I like she's, she's Log, Log quirky really for has, Log She's really full has. of herself, and it's annoying. Mm, yes, but I think Log Horizon really hasn't had a character like that yet. You're you're right, but uh, I just don't like her. I'm welcome to the change. I always think Log Horizon is always able to impress. It's done stuff that I was afraid was going to be cliche before and never did. Uh, I know a lot of people tend to hate like the the Akatsuki uh, uh, love love triangle with with the uh, that got kind of annoying with, after with like and uh, I... and what's your name? Minori, I think. I can't remember. Min- Minori, is that what it was? Yeah, I think so. Uh, once again, I don't have fucking... <laughs> I, don't, I don't have fucking Wikipedia up. And I used to remember these characters' as names when I was watching Log Horizon regularly. Still am, but, it, you know, it's 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 only been two weeks since it's returned, so, like, everything kind of has to settle back in again. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, like, like, that love triangle right there, it didn't bother me as much as most people, because... The characters didn't walk around in circles really questioning their feelings, you know? They got straight to the point yes. and they said, they said, this is what the romance is. I know I'm in a love triangle. I'm going to do something about it. Or at least Minori did. Akatsuki is kind of still on the couch, just, just kind of digging her head in the pillow. Yeah. But, uh, Almost literally in the Whatever. The theme. It, it, it acknowledges, it, it doesn't beat around the bush and it acknowledges that the love triangle is there. And you know what? With as many bad love triangles I've seen in anime, this uh, is I've a seen welcome, so many awful love triangles. This is a welcome change. Yep. And so that's why I don't mind it that much. That's why I'm kind of okay with it. Uh, people are making a love triangle out of Tetra, Naosugu, oh, no, and, and Marie. You guys can go fuck yourselves. It's <laughs> Naosugu and Marie all the way. All right. That's they actually that's got like some stays. support in the series. That's how it stays. All right, and when I, when I posted that like on the hummingbird thread, I didn't think I'd get as many likes as I did. Funny enough, it happened. <laughs> um, it was only like six likes last time I checked, uh, which which may not sound like much to like a lot of people, you know. But it's like on a forum, I think that's a little bit more than like trying to count like likes on like a YouTube video, all right? Yeah. So, uh, so I mean, I'm I'm a little more proud of that. Uh, but I I'm. I'm in support for Tetra's character because I think Log Horizon can pull her off. I don't think she'll be as annoying as a lot of people worry she will be. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm afraid faithful. she'll be really annoying. I'm faithful just because it's Log Horizon. You know, I wasn't disappointed by the love triangle. I wasn't disappointed by uh, Rondel. Right? Is that what Wait, what? Was? Yeah, Rondel. Rond- Rondel House or whatever his name was. I was afraid he was going to be annoying. Rondel House. I was afraid he was going to be annoying too because he seemed... Really yeah, full of himself. He, he seemed really full of himself. Um, not full of himself in the way that Tetra is. Yeah. Uh, he, he was a little more... Uh, like, posh. Like, I'm a noble better than everyone else. Yeah, it's like, I'm, I'm better than you. I'm, I'm, I'm only level 20. I'm, I'm fabulous. And and then he ended up being a way deeper character. And, 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 and like, has one of my favorite kill scenes... Yes. I didn't want to say death scenes because I don't want to mix people up with like people dying, but like when he put he killed a wolf by punching it in the mouth, like it's. <laughs> oh my Wait, god! So you remember it was how awesome. he, you remember his death scene, but you can't remember his name. <laughs> like 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 I said, the characters that haven't shown up again, I'm still struggling with. They should have been episode one. 
Yeah, but the, I don't. I don't think their names are really mentioned at any point. Uh, the the only characters I can really remember that I haven't seen again yet are, are just like uh, Nyanta and, and Krusty, because Nyanta and Krusty are like the two favorite characters in the series. Too bad. So, so I'm still Nyanta. waiting for them to like make like a comeback and do something badass. Didn't Krusty like show up once in the episode, or was it much? I don't remember. I don't think so. I, th- I thought he showed up like once. I don't. I don't think so. I probably would have gotten really, really hyped if it did happen. Because <laughs> I would have been like Krusty. Well, the princess showed up again. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sure he'll show up again too. And, um, and Nyanta, I like because Nyanta's just, just really fucking suave. He is. He is suave. Something else I noticed uh, when Akatsuki was going to the shop to look at weapons, the shop owner is in the ED, so she's gonna come back. She's gonna play some mm. kind of role. Um, because she's she's in the ending sequence as the credits rolls, you know, as uh, you know the ending credits this time is like just kind of watching, fucking watching like Akatsuki sleep and having all these dreams, yeah. and, and 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 she's and she's in the ED, you know, in that montage of characters who are like watching her sleep, so she's gonna come mm. back. She's gonna do something. I don't know what, but it's probably gonna be important to Akatsuki's development as a character because I think we're all waiting for her to get more confident in herself. Yeah. Uh, but that's all I really have on Log Horizon Season 2. Uh, me too. Ep- Log Horizon Season 2, Episode 2. And now for another Blade Works. Episode 1, quote unquote, uh, Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Da Works. Da Works. Da Works! <sighs> Alright. No, the, the actual English one of Blade Works is pronounced like that, don't worry. Um, wow. Even though the actual like English chant for it is still pretty fucking hilarious, um, hilarious and badass at the same time because you love Archer's voice, but you realize that part of it doesn't really make sense. Um, uh, I mean, I got a question about that later. If you'll give me right. a hint as to who he is, Archer. Yeah. Like. Uh, all right. Well, we'll we'll talk about it on our own time. Bleep it out, kind of like how we bleeped out the world. No, I'm just ask. Like, is he related to any of the characters in the show? In this and stay night. Is he? Don't say who. Just say if he is. Yes. Okay. Okay. First of all, what did what did you notice? All right, because two hints have been dropped so far throughout the series. Uh, oh, so. Point pointing to stuff. Okay. Two hints have been dropped throughout the series, pointing to stuff. But I said uh, in last week's episode, for those who could tolerate listening to it, that there was an element. I just messaged to, to my UB, guess. To UBW. An, an element, because right, because I'm trying to do my best not to spoil UBW for those listening for the first time. An element's a very general word, so so there's an element to it, and there have been two aspects of foreshadowing that have pointed to this very element of UBW. Uh, this is where I, this is what I really like about UBW. I'm sorry, I'll interrupt you, but I want to get this one thing out of the way. Is I think uh, Aluminum Blade Works was chosen as the route for for this adaption because Fate Zero definitely spoils Unlimited Blade Works the least. So you can uh. still get a very good experience, a very good self-contained with a lot of setup and payoff uh, experience out of Unlimited Blade Works without Fate Zero. Mm. Fate Zero is just icing on the cake, and I will get more to that later. But uh, but uh, f- finish your thought. Uh, I just messaged you my guess based on because the dual swords. That's the only thing I've noticed that has been a hint to uh, Gawain from the Tales of King Arthur. Gawain used two swords, kind of like Archer oh, so, does. Oh, so you think Archer is Gawain? That's just a guess I'm going to have. I don't, I don't think so, since they used Lance a lot last season. But he's my only guess so far. Yeah, um, it's kind of funny. Uh, you're not the only person I know that has guessed Lance a lot at an extremely early point in Fate Zero. Uh, I guess for like history buffs, it's honestly not that hard to guess. Uh, I've seen him rage when he saw Saber the first time. It's like, yeah, yeah, you're a lot. I, you I know, saw, one I, saw, I saw, from I saw some stories. people identify him just from different stuff, like not even the rage. Like some guy, like I know someone who identified him just from being in the lake. I know yes, someone who identified like, him by like the, lake, the armor. I, I'm like, that's Lancelot. Um, so that's like the, the Lady of the Lake scene. Like, that's I, th- I, th- I, th- I think it was the armor. I don't. I don't remember what what someone uh, specifically mentioned. But I know. Th- I know three people, you including uh, one of them. I know three people who identified him 
each for a different reason. Wow. So, uh, one I believe was the armor. I don't remember. I'll have to talk to that person again. Or I have the I have the specific message that they sent me. Um, one was by the lake, and you were you know just oh man the this, guy, this guy gets really fucking pissed off every time he sees King Arthur. I wonder who he is. So, but the only famous character from the King Arthur stories that's not King Arthur. Yeah, right. So, um, I personally... Or Merlin. I personally didn't really guess it, but that's because I really didn't think about it. So, I let it surprise me when it happened. Uh, but funny enough, um, I, I told a friend to actually look out for the twist of who Lancelot is, and he still couldn't guess it, so when it turned out to be Lancelot, he was still blown away. It kind of cracked me up. Um, <laughs> but, uh... Is, is it going... Um, do you want me to tell you? No, don't don't tell me. Tell me later. Okay. okay, I'll tell you this. You don't have to censor this out. All right. You can keep this conversation. In. Um. So okay, okay. Uh, moving on from that, I, I talked about Fate Zero. Yeah. And I want to say that there's so much imagery in here, so many references to Fate Zero in this adaption. Oh, there was a lot of references that, that you, to Fate that Zero. That you never saw in in the original Fate Zero adaption. And that you didn't even see nearly this much in the original Fate Stay Night visual novel when they were still attempting to expand its universe, you know. Like, there's so much Fate Zero here that, like, I feel like this was made for me. <laughs> Not you, but me. Like, it's just it's like that, that, that guy who, you know, started the series with Fate Zero, who fell in love with Fate Zero, and, and there's so much acknowledgement to Fate Zero here, like, like when you saw like like Avalon connect to Excalibur, yes. you know I was like was I was, was like I understand this, I I understand <laughs> this. You know? I think we should just make a blanket statement. Like if I think, it was mentioned in Fate Zero and it's referenced in Fate Tonight, we're gonna spoil it. Yeah. Because we are, we already reviewed Fate Zero on here. And 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 I'm gonna be entirely honest. I think a lot of Fate Tonight Night's twists outside of Unlimited Blade Works, so the Fate Route and Heaven's Fuel Route, are really really fucking stupid. <laughs> so it's it's like I don't mind spoiling some of them, um, especially the ones that do connect back to uh, Fate Zero, um, right? So, oh man, it's 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 like I I can see where people are coming from when they say like watch Fate Stay Night first because or like read the visual novel first, whatever, whatever. You know those loyalists, but it's yeah. like th you're called a loyalist for a reason because you, you refuse to modernize, and yeah. and and. Face to Night Unlimited Playworks, I'm sorry to tell you, is modernization. I think this is a Fate Zero sequel all the way. While, wow. st while still being while still being an adaption of Fate Stay Night, because that that's what it is at heart, but it's modernized to be a sequel to Fate Zero because this is fucking Yefotable. And guess what Yefotable made for? Fate, Fate Zero. Zero. Right? So from you know from, so from a production standard they're used to Fate Zero, they're going to connect themselves to Fate Zero, and they're going to connect their audience back to Fate Zero, too. Uh, I did like seeing the Excalibur connect to Avalon scene. That was, the, that was a nice scene. Oh, that was so fucking hype. And when Kiritsugu showed up. Yeah, when I saw Kiritsugu again, too, I was just like, like Kiritsugu. He look, like, the look on his face was like, I feel bad now. Like he looked defeated. And and the thing is, is like this, the series isn't even trying to hide things either. Like Fate Stay Night, like the original visual novel, it, like it it, it, it hid Gilgamesh from you. Like like it wanted to say it wanted to like surprise you with Gilgamesh, make him a plot twist, you know, make him like 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 this final boss that you never saw coming. This adaption of Fate Stay Night's not doing that. It's like bam, hey, look, he's right there in the Gilgamesh. opening. Like look, here's Gilgamesh. Here's the here's Kirei with him. You know, they're a fucking team. <laughs> You know, I'm waiting for Kira to show up because I remember his design in Fate Stay Night looks so stupid. Uh, the Dean adaptation, from what I saw of it. Well, I mean, he, he doesn't really look that different. Talking he, about he, the, he the like... mullet. He grew a mullet in the ten uh, years between series. Yeah, he he kind of still grew like his hair out, but I wouldn't really call it a mullet. I don't. I don't remember what the Dean version looked like. I refused to look at the Dean version very much. It, if you, if you recall, if I ever said this, I don't know. I only watched uh, the first eight episodes of it, and then yeah, I was like, oh, "I'm done." <laughs> so, so I don't. I don't. I don't remember it very much. 
Uh, but oh wow. Okay. Um, Animation-wise, the opening blew me away. It the animation was, was, was great. It was kind of generic, but the animation for it was just so fucking damn good. I didn't care for the song that, that, that much. That, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really care for the song much either. Uh, the animation for it was so damn good that it was it was definitely breathtaking. Almost killed me when the gay ball scene when the gay bog <laughs> scene happened. It <laughs> definitely fucking blew me away. Lot. I had to pause. I had to pause. I was like, "Oh my god, that just happened! That was so amazing!" Just, that looked great. Just, just, uh, just ah, blah, 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 Same just, game. Just, just fucking jizz all over the screen. Um, yeah, the name that that line that don't go together. Yeah, it's, I'm. I'm sorry. His lance is fucking called the gay bulk. I don't know what. To uh, I, 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 I'm, I just, oh, what you said in response for you. to seeing it. <laughs> um, but uh. Oh wow. Okay, I, I I have one I have one problem with the animation though. Um, it's with the opening, mm -hmm. and it's, I kind of don't like how they use the same shot of Shiro twice. <laughs> they use the same shot of Shiro twice, all within the same minute and a half. It's it's when he's like it's 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 a low angle, looking at him from his back, you know, and then he turns to like look at his hand, cut away, come back to that same exact shot. And then he turns to the only this time look at Saber. And I was like, mm, you could have done better, you photo bowl. <laughs> you could have done better. Unlimited budget works, as it's being called. Yeah, unlimited budget works. Uh, unlimited budget works. Showed in the opening, didn't show at that particular moment. Uh. Moments, because it was two. <laughs> uh, a few things on my on my notes. Like the The eyes are still like really creepy. Uh, like, the, eyes, eyes, like, the, the eyes I'm fine with. Sakura's eyes are supposed to look lifeless. My oh, problem, I, I know. My, my problem is. I'm saying they're creepy anyway. Shiro's chin looks really fucking weird when it's underneath that scarf because you, you you can't see it. And I don't know if you photoable like went through like the actual anatomy of it, like or if they just kind of give up like when it gets into the scarf. But sometimes it looks like he has no chin when when it goes into the mm. scarf because it's like the. Like where where I assume his neck is supposed to be, it looks so like small, like that gap. It, it, it looks odd sometimes. Just being honest, like it's like a lot of people like have a problem with like Rin's face for some reason. I don't have a problem with I Rin's face. I, I think Rin looks fucking cute. Like this is the cutest she's ever looked. I'm glad her face is a little bit rounder and stuff like that. You know, <laughs> it's like it's Shiro's face at times in the profile view of him that that I tend to have a problem with. Uh. Sakura actually looks pretty damn amazing. Like if, one thing if, I like if there's about any character that got uh, perfect, it was Sakura. One thing I like about this much better than like the four episodes of Dean's version that I watched was Sakura and Shiro like five times more likable than they were. It's like every she's, time was what she's not as fucking annoying. She still yes. says senpai a lot, oh, but she's... she doesn't say it nearly as annoyingly ish. Yeah. She she comes yeah. across as more human. She comes across as more down to earth. She comes across as more well aware that she's supposed to be a tragic character. Shit. <laughs> um, and... So I really hope that she doesn't get wasted because she was so prominent in in this premiere. She she was prominent. Yeah. And yeah. her and her talking to Gilgamesh like that scene happened, you know, and like it'd be a waste to have it in the UBW route when it's not even relevant until the Heavens Feel route. Which is why I'm still riding that theory, partially, you know, there's there's several things that are still helping me ride the theory, but I'm still riding that theory that this Fate Stay Night adaption is at some point going going to find a way to connect itself to the Heavens Feel movie. I think mm -hmm. it's going to happen. I honestly do. Um, I'm just for that. Like, I feel like Shearer's power has to potentially be ridiculously overpowered. Really like strengthen and weaken things. That's uh, that can be abused, right? Yes, I don't think it's ever gonna. It doesn't ever get abused to the degree of, of, of which I uh, uh, that know you're fearing. I'm not but, fearing it. I, but, I think it'd be cool. Oh well, I mean, yeah. I mean, he, he still does make it really fucking cool. Um, I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, Shiro can, uh, you, know, you know, definitely. He turned a like poster into a steel so into a sword. Kind of recreate the structure, you know. Yeah. See, when I always imagined it in the visual novel, I always thought like things were actually like changing to like what to like what 
he was changing the molecular structure to. Uh. So it's like if so it's like if you rolled up the poster, and and, and turned it to something like as hard as steel. I I assumed all of a sudden like now he was like holding a pipe. Like I thought he was actually transforming <laughs> it. Apparently not. This anime has corrected me. Okay. In Dean's version, he actually picked up like a poster wrapped around a pipe, and didn't fix it. For some reason, it was just a poster wrapped around a pipe. From the ones that uh, the teacher brought to his house. Also, uh, his panic attack at the beginning was just well animated. When uh, she like put like Worcestershire sauce. People crack his... people crack me up when they're wondering like why there's no blood stain on his clothes. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, I have my notes twice. I wish attack. to shove Shinji out of a window. Wait, wait, wait. When, when did Shiro have a panic attack? At the very beginning after he wakes up. And he's eating breakfast. And, uh... Oh, like when he has the flashback? Here's something no, that got no, me. No, no, no. Like, when uh, Fujimura switched out his food. Oh. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that, was, that was fine. That was, like, I, so well animated. I'm I like, was so impressed by the animation I, of it. I, the thing that gets how? me, though, is, is like humor in Fate Stay Night still kind of feels very out of place. Yeah, that's my biggest problem And I'm not so even far. connecting it to Fate Zero in that way. Like, even when I was reading the visual novel, I, it didn't feel right. For there to be that I, much I, humor. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't care about these kitchen scenes. I really didn't. I didn't care about... I, did, I didn't care about Fuji, Mora... I think those are full names. Yeah. Uh, I didn't care about... I didn't care about her, her gags, you know. I didn't I didn't care about the conversations that she has with Sakura. Like there was one point in the Heaven's Fear where they talk about bra sizes. I didn't give a shit. I don't give a shit about like her nickname being you know Tiger because her name's Taiga. Um, it's she, she she's there to be comic relief and. Tore door with that joke. And she's also a plot device in, in UBW by the way. She is a plot device for Caster to use, and that also kind of pissed me off because I was like this character doesn't need to be here. You finally found something for her to do, and but it's, it's but it's it's literally just to be a pawn. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> like Shinji in the show pissed me off so much. Like he's a character you want to hate, and shove out a window. I respected him more when I got his backstory. You still hate him. He never changed. He's never stopped being a douche. But you understand why he's a douche when when you start realizing. Uh, you, you can kind of piece the, the, the pieces he goes you, that you, you can slug piece treatment the thing. pieces together already right because he's yeah. a member of the Mato family he went through like the slug pit but thing but Zoken what did he want he like a wanted, daughter he, he wanted a daughter he didn't want a daughter but it's like he wanted he wanted a, mage, a strong wizard yeah he wanted a, a mage. mage as strong as Sakura which Shinji isn't and Shinji's really pissed off about that and yeah he still, he, he still he holds was. it against Sakura to this day that's kind of why he beats her is, is 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 because he takes his he takes his frustration that he's not as good as her out on her. Yeah. And and it, I, I figured and as much, but I, I, I and still and hate people his who, People who feel like I'm spoiling Fate Stay Night for them, I'm sorry, but this is. Stuff I've never that seen Fate Stay Night, and I made that connection myself. Yes, this is stuff that stands out. All right. You could, I'm, if I'm, you put two, two together, you get stuff that out. stands out. I'm pointing out stuff that you can connect on your own with just a little bit of thought. Yeah, um, so you're not really spoiling, since you can easily p put two and two together. Uh, I was wanted to shove him out of a window when he showed up at the end of the episode, and made uh, Shiro stay after school to clean. It's like, yeah, I kind of have a problem with that scene. It's like, oh, I don't, no, I you don't can do it yourself. How many times you tell it, it still makes Shiro look like a pushover. Yes, he's like, sure, I'll do your chores for you. It's like, no. I understand. That like Shir was like reminiscing uh, at, in the archery club because you know he's, yeah he used to be in it apparently because he used to be in it so I assumed that he was reminiscing I only made that connection when he started fixing the bow itself because I don't think that was necessary I think he just had to fucking like just scrub the floor yeah but uh, I think would I think what would have just drove it in just a little bit more if if if, if he wanted to get that point across that maybe he specifically wanted to to take care of the archery club because he misses it. Is, is, is maybe just have him like fire the bow. Maybe, maybe have him have a practice shot. Yeah, have him yeah. fire the bow. Or not even like put an actual arrow in it, but just stretch the string a little bit or something. Yeah, you know? pull the string. Make him show that he cares. That would have been much better than him just accepting like a pushover. Yeah, having him accept it like a pushover. Uh, going furthermore on the archery club, 
uh, another connection I am making, not spoiler, spoiler, not spoiler, um, I think, again, another stuff that's not something else that isn't specifically stated, uh, but that I'm making the connection on my own with, is that I think Rin is attending the archery club more to watch over Sakura now that Shiro quit. Yeah, that's what I because, figured. Because she's she going. Could, yeah, because she gave... Because Rin, you know, in her own mind, gave Shiro the duty of, of, of guarding Sakura because Sakura uses Shiro to stay sane. Karya could never do it for her. Shiro is doing it for her. But now Shiro quit. He, no, the archery he, club. He, yeah, he quit, he quit the archery club. So now Sakura really has no one to look over her, so now Rin has to... So now Rin's taking it upon herself. Uh, yeah. That's where I'm going with it. That was easy enough to spot. And something I noticed was, I thought the command seals only appeared on your right hand. Yeah, how far on Shiro, it's his left. Yeah. And on Some, something else, I, something so I, I think... appreciated, by the way, it looked like an actual bruise. Because when I was reading the visual novel, yeah, and like, a bruise. He's, like, he's, like, he's like, oh man, I think like I, like, I, like I, I, I cut my hand or something, like in the workshop today, or like in the shed. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you cut your hand in this very diverse specific pattern <laughs> yeah sure you did <laughs> but isn't it supposed to be like on your right hand because that was like everyone in fades your head on the right hand no it, it, it does not matter it, it does not matter see the thing that actually confuses me is i'm wondering why like rin had to speak her really really bad german to use her command seal in episode zero hmm. because no one ever did that in fade zero and shiro didn't do it when he used his command seal on saber in this episode either. i love to see they use the command seal it's like really you're gonna waste one for that like of I'm, the two teenagers I'm, who are who are masters, it's like of the six you have between the two of you, you've already wasted two on stupid decisions. Shiro didn't know he was gonna use a command seal, right? Uh, I, think uh, the, I think the command seal was was used because uh, because the way I see command seals, I think they're just they activate on their own um, solely to manipulate willpower, right? So yeah. Saber wants to fight, Shiro doesn't. He doesn't know he's using a command seal, but it's against. It's, it's his master's will to, to be against his servants to be against his servants' will, so the command seal is going to activate. Yeah, I, no, I guess. But still, it's just like you wasted one you should... by by accident. By accident, Rin, but still. Rin doesn't have a good enough excuse. Rin knew what she was doing because she knew all about the command seal. She just wasted one. It's like yeah, you get was, no sympathy she, for that. She, she was being kind of a brat. Again, I'm still kind of riding the theory though that. Like Archer is still somewhat under her command. You know, he's still somewhat under that that spell. Yeah. Um, he mentioned himself because she's so powerful, and it was, it was I vaguely think that's worded. Bullshit. Even though I'm pretty sure she reinforced the spell a little bit by speaking the German, I can always assume that's what it was there for. <laughs> but I still think that for the most part is bullshit because he even said that it's still extremely broad. I think yeah. that he's just trying to manipulate her to get her on his side so he doesn't have to listen to what she has to say. I said this yeah. in the last episode, but I'm repeating it again because I know episode one of this podcast was, was so lately recorded. I'm, I'm going to repeat it again that, like, I think Archer, you know, he's trying to manipulate her. He's trying to get her on his side. And he finally, you know, got that moment. Like, he realized, yes, like, you know, like, 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 I'm, I can finally do what I want because, you know, Rin gave him, you know, that, that, that allowance to, to, yeah. to, to fight how he wants you know she said you'll get no help from me just fight and he's like awesome I still have my free will yeah you because I, cause I've, I've gained her trust in me <laughs> I think we've just about covered everything for Unlimited Blade Works uh no okay there's something else I want to say being a reader of the visual novel there's something that really pisses me off and something that really removes me from the experience. What? And that's like the, the visual novel where each class has stats. Like, they have RPG stats. They do? Right? Yes. This is an actual thing in the visual novel, and this is what really frustrates me, is is that there's, there's strength, defense, magic, stealth, luck, like, stuff like that, you know? And, and, and some of it kind of speaks for itself. Some of it you can write into the dialogue naturally. Um... Like, I think, like, a change between, like, Fate Zero, like, in the Japanese and, and the English dub was when Assassin was talking about, he's like, oh, like, I, like I'm, like, A-plus in stealth. And he kind of said, like, I'm highly skilled in stealth or something like that. 
mm. like like it's, some of it some of some of it is kind of have a kind of given right like you know berserker is going to be the strongest because he's just fucking berserker yeah. um but some stuff's really arbitrary like luck like a lot of people hold it against lancer that like oh he, he has like rank e luck and, and I'm like, well, I'm like, what the fuck does that even mean? Like, how do you measure that? I mean, I guess if you look at Lancer's fate and fate zero. Yeah, but it's, it's still yeah, bad so luck. it's still so dumb. It removes me from the experience. I don't like it, and I think this adaption is 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 is, is kind of like fate zero in in a way that it's it's trying to tell it a little more subtly. So the thing is, is that Saber had more luck. Than Lancer did. So that's, that's why what she like, survived. That, that, that's how she Didn't survived. It. Was because she had rank B luck. Lancer had rank E luck, and, and luck is, is is kind of a measurement of determining how much you can like change fate. Which I, I just I don't understand how you measure that. That's why it pisses me off. <laughs> how do and, you measure changing fate? Yeah, right. So that's confusing. So like so like this is this is something I really liked about the fight scene, and, and the gay bulk version, uh, the gay bulk scene. Was 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 beautiful. Yes. And, and, and and this version of it, what I loved about it so much, was when it connected with her sword. She explained it as reverse and effect, right? Yeah. So it's like connected with the sword, time rewound, and the attack moved. And hit her. And 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 and, 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 and hit her. The thing Incredibly is, is, overpowered. Is, and it's the thing is, what what I liked about it is 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 it didn't really have to explain in any way, shape, or form. You know that like, like oh Saber, you know changed fate in her favor, like like I I think what it was was just she got lucky. The, the noble phantasm worked, like it did its thing. It's it's just you. How do you fucking aim that? <laughs> you know, like it's 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 a giant fucking laser beam of, of doom. You know, and, and it's like it's, <laughs> how do you it's gonna, dodge it's, that? It's, it's, it's gonna connect where it connects. She she didn't dodge it. The, and I think this is probably so, something wrong with maybe Crunchyroll's fans, uh, Crunchyroll subs. The man in white. The man in white. You know, that man in blue and that man in white. No, when I watched um, it earlier today, it was man in red and man in blue. Did they edit it? Yeah. Did they fix it? Okay, so, 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 so it's like this line really bothers me. And it might be Crunchyroll, it might even just be the actual dialogue. It's like, so you dodged my undodgeable blow. But then it kind of gets fixed a second later when it's like my attack is useless if it's not fatal that's that's kind of a given but like like what I work about it is you don't need that luck measurement in it right yeah the, the, the scene you dodge my dodgeable luck she clearly didn't dodge it uh like d doesn't really make much sense but it's because it, cause it connected it, it just didn't connect as well as Lancer wanted it to be and I don't think it has anything to do with his luck measurement I, I think it's just Saber just, deflecting it at the last yeah, second. Yeah, just, just deflecting it at the last second. Or just, you know, not having really that much control over the attack. I mean, when you look at it, it's it's certainly confusing. And and then and there's um and there's even more than one version of of the of the Lance's attack, so it's it it, re it requires a very high level of mastery and you know and stuff like that. So so who knows well how Lancer can even use it. Mm -hmm. Um I, I don't know. I, I think just there's a lot of things you can point at that I think is is fixing this problem that I really have with with fate sometimes, or just the Nasu verse in general. It's just when you measure really, really obscure stuff, like um, like like the dialogue in a uh, in the visual novel when Kiritsu who introduces himself, he says, "I'm a sorcerer, not I'm a magic user." And in definition, in the Nasu verse, sorcerers are supposed to be people who create miracles. I don't know what the fucking measurement for that is. What's a miracle? How In a world one? where you can summon the spirits of dead warriors, what constitutes as a miracle? Yeah, right? Like, what's a miracle? Sorcerers are cast miracles? What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> and, and so, like, I think they just, they got, when again, like, they, 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 they took that out. They took that stuff that doesn't make sense, that doesn't make sense out. And they just says, I'm just a magic user. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So, now I think they've covered just about everything for this episode of Unlimited Blade Works. Do you agree? Uh, I guess so. I still have a bullet point, but not one that I want to say, unless you're going to say it yourself, because I, I already know what it's leading to. It's, it's one of those it depends, foreshadowing. what is it? It's, it's one of those foreshadowing things. Um, 
the necklace. Uh, yeah, that's apparently going to get explained later on. From according to the thread on Hummingbird. Yeah, yeah, because uh, I, I, um, not as many people are talking about it as I thought they would. Uh, I know some but, like, but, but, but those who don't, but those who don't notice it, um, are uh, extremely smart people. Because uh, you know, this is why I love Unlimited Blade Works so much. Because because I do think it has the best build up and best payoff of any of the routes, and it's definitely the one that makes the most sense when it comes to its own self contained twists. Uh, and, and and the necklace does play a lot of foreshadowing. Mm -hmm. So so you know, yes, Shiro took a necklace home. Or he didn't take it home per se. You didn't really see what he did with it, but he's he grabbed it, and then you also saw Archer like he returned last it episode, to her. He returned yeah. it to her. So something happened to the necklace. I mean, yeah. I, I I can guarantee that. I, I'm going to say that is. So are we done with fate. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're we're done with episode one of Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Breaks. This is definitely, I think, probably the longest we've. We've Thirty minutes. Maybe the, maybe the longest we'll talk about any of the episodes. Um, I don't have nearly. No, no, never mind. I think I had just as many notes for Gatsuki no Yona. All right, so we're we gonna do World Trigger. World Trigger. First thing I want to say, this episode still doesn't look that great, but looks way better than episode one. Yeah, I agree with that one. Not saying much, but it looks like not, not saying one. much, but it looks great. The Triant soldiers are actually 2D this time. They're not fucking terrible, terrible, terrible CGI. CGI. Terrible CGI. Um. Uh, what I didn't like about this episode, and this is something I still don't like about the manga, is, is how incredibly slow it's going. Right. So yeah, I felt very some people are holding. Oh, uh, when I when I looked at um the random curiosity uh, review for episode two of World Trigger. It was kind of praised for being really slow. I don't like that so much. Um, because you must too goddamn perfect. Like, he doesn't really have much at stake. And, and it's, it's, it's kind of an on-running gag that it's like he's being manipulated because he doesn't understand the human world. And then when he finally like, gets it, like, he, he gets back at people, right? Yeah. So it's, it's like, like... Once or twice, I'm okay with that. But, but it's, it's like... like the he, third, he, he, got, he, he got basically, like, robbed, like, three times in, in this one episode. And it was annoying. It was it was like first from I think like the bullies of the first episode, and then it was like from the guy bugs. who said he broke his leg. And then yeah, he yeah, actually and broke the, his leg. And then he actually broke his leg, which was badass. That was awesome. It's like, but okay, I'll and, then, make sure and, this and then the school bullies show up <laughs> again to be like, oh man, pay up or else we're not gonna let you off the school roof. And, he like stomps and the Yuma roof down. And Yuma just stomps and scares them. Now I see, this is. If they were going to reuse this gag, I wish they would have done it point by point, because I think they removed the funniest part about it. Which is him, like, acting like he didn't didn't understand it. No, with, no the, the funniest part about it was that he actually scared them so hard that the memories that they got erased were knocked back into them. They, they were? <laughs> In the manga? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I remember that. I, I will go back and review it, but I'm pretty positive... Like, that's what happened, and it, that's amazing. Cracked, and it cracked me up. Um, he scared them so badly, their memories came back. He, he scared them so bad, their memories came back because they're just that afraid of him. And it's like, oh man, like their mind knows, that it's like, this guy, watch <laughs> Stay out. away, stay <laughs> away. Yeah, but um, Yuma's just, like, right now it's, he, he, he has nothing at stake. Yeah. He, he's too good at what he does. He should just troll. Yeah, he, he, he's That's all he exists troll. for. And um, I want I want to point this out, is that uh, I believe it was last week's issue of uh, Shonen Jump. I only read it this week, but uh, I I think I tend to be an issue of uh, Shonen Jump behind. Uh, let me let me look for a second. I'm gonna see if the uh, yes yes yeah, so this was last week's issue. Um, the October 6th issue of uh, Shonen Jump had an editorial uh, that was an interview with uh, World Trigger's editor, uh, Manga. So, and, and what was really interesting was, I'm not going to go over the whole interview, but the, the interview got to this point where it, it talked about how World Trigger's ratings at the beginning were extremely low, and it didn't start picking up until chapter 14 specifically, right? Mm. So, that'll take a while. 
Yeah, so I, I think anyone who is going to feel the same way about World Trigger is going to have to wait until we get to the episode equivalent of Chapter 14. Uh, now, granted, I don't think I'm going to have to worry about that too much. Or I don't think, like, an audience is going to have to worry about that too much. Because so far, I think the anime audience of World Trigger has taken it more positively than the manga audience has. Just something I've noticed. Yeah, I, I've seen people a lot more, ha like, not angry about <laughs> how slow it is and stuff. Yeah. It's, like, it's a lot more positive than I was expecting. But something I noticed in the episode that I hadn't... Either wasn't mentioned in episode one or I just missed it. Are that the triggers are neighbor weapons. Mm -hmm. Casually mentioned. Yeah, the, the, the triggers are, uh... Yeah. They didn't really mention that in episode one, did they? Uh... If they did, I not, missed not, it. Not necessarily... Um... Yuma just kind of clearly, you know, showed the fact that he had a trigger, and that he said that he was a neighbor, right? Yeah. It's well, well, well said ep that episode one, episode one in the, in in, in the exposition dump, you know, you know, it did say that they studied neighbor technology. Yeah, but I Osama think, like, literally I, I says think, they're neighbor weapons. Yeah. In episode two, I'm like. And 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 he also corrected him. He also corrected Osamu, saying that neighbors are. Are like normal humans. Are are yeah neighbors. Are humans who are on this other gate. Are humans on the other gate, and that Tryon soldiers are, are the we are the weapons being sent through. They are like, not technically neighbors themselves. And there are apparently like countries inside the dimension. Like at, at war. According yeah, to I mean, yeah, there's 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 life. There's 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 life beyond beyond the, the gate. gate. And, like and, the gate and, is and, not just like one country. There's, like, yeah. hundreds of, like, apparently a lot of countries who are, like, in a like constant war against each other, which I thought like, was pretty interesting. Like, like, Yuma, you know, he talks about his dad highly, you know? Yeah. So, so it's like, so it's like he, he was taken care of by his dad. And and, 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 and in the manga right now, from, from, uh, from the neighbors we've met, they are all villains, but I hope we, I, I, I hope we meet more good guys. Uh, yeah. Along the way, I hope. But uh, the manga doesn't really need that right now. The manga is at a very incredibly epic point. Um, so, I mean, to where I, I I don't know where the anime is gonna get. If this is a one core series, I think it's going to stop right before the invasion arc. I've heard that, it's gonna be that's since what, it's that's like what it's called. Toei, it's probably going to like fifty episodes. It's only it's only like seventy five chapters. Mm. Yeah. No, I think like also like Seven Deadly Sins is only ninety four chapters. Wow. So, and it's that and it's getting and it's getting it's getting like a full twenty four episode adaption. So I think maybe Toei can ride this adaption to 24, 25, 26 episodes, um, and 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 catch up to like right where like the manga's current arc is going to end. And maybe stop there, but I'm going to not get my hopes up and say it's going to st uh, it's going to stop right before the very best arc of of, of of World Trigger when it finally you know really kicks off like like I know it gets better when more characters get introduced and we finally start focusing on other people besides Osamu and Yuma and, and the cast really starts expanding um, yeah. but it's like stuff isn't just going to get epic as all fucking hype you know, and, and, until the invasion arc, and I'm going to assume that World Trigger is going to stop right before that. I, I think it's going to drop you on a cliffhanger, see if it makes enough money, and I think it probably won't because it's so low budget that no one wants to watch it. <laughs> but, but those that are, thank you for being patient. Thank you for having a overall positive opinion about this series. Um, World Trigger's worth it. Yeah, I don't have anything really else to say about uh, World Trigger. Uh, Other than the uh, memory erasing thing that Border does. Well, she was a little less than. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it shows nice. a little bit. It shows a little bit shadier side to Border. Yeah. Um, and I guess the only really noteworthy part of this episode is that a Tryon soldier attack happens outside the. Yeah, outside of the uh, Forbidden Zone, as they call it. Yeah, now outside like the concentrated zone where all the attacks are supposed to be, so like they, they have, can never like, attack the, uh, people. Sight. The, like magnet that was all of the uh, gate locations to him. Yeah, so so that's gonna have to be dealt with. And um, 
and it kind of it kind of leaves you off on a little bit of interest about what went wrong. You know what's going to happen. My personal theory is just like some kind of like secondary community. It's like a different set of gates. It's my personal theory. Like oh. the gate they, they had like the magnet to was um, just like one area, like one of the one of those countries, and that one came from a different country inside the uh, neighbor dimension. It's my personal theory. You know, uh, I get really hyped though every time I see World Trigger's opening and, and just seeing like all all like my favorites of just the characters. Just the opening is pretty good. I mean, the opening is just kind of oh, it's a really long character montage, so it doesn't really say anything about the show. But it's like I don't yeah. care. Every time I see like my favorite characters come on the screen, I'm just like, oh my god, I love you so much. Like, you don't do the thing that defines you as like what makes you my favorite character. You know, in this fucking opening, but it's like just that moment I had with you. So, <laughs> uh, so you ready to move on to Akatsuki? Yes, ready to move on to Akatsuki. No, Yona. All right. I am not a fan of the opening song. Wow. Um, the opening's okay. I'm not. The, I, I, I'm not a fan I, of I, vocalist OPs. Like, uh, I think um, I would like this opening better if I think I don't think the animation of the opening as actually as good is is as good as the actual show. Because I, I gotta say, when Suwon and Hawk fought, I was pretty impressed. I'm going that looked, it looked nice honest. for how how short the fight was. It looked nice. For how short the fight was, it looked nice. And and and, and this is something I actually like about Fate Zero better than Fate Stay Night is I I think Fate Zero's fights were definitely more grounded. Yeah, you mentioned this last week. Um, and, like and, and, the and, and, the servants' fights were more grounded, while the masters' fights were crazy. Yeah, I mean, I I, w- I would prefer like just, just grounded fights overall. Now for the masters, like in Fate Zero, I, I kind of I, I kind of accepted it because like they're the magic users, you know, they're 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 the ones that, that know all the special magic techniques and have studied you know, all this stuff. No, never use magic, Even except Kiritsu. for his acceleration stuff. Yeah. And his um, origin bullet, whatever he called it. And, and, and so that stuff was always really, it was like, okay with me, because it, cause I still got like my grounded fights from the servants, because the servants, they were just warriors, and, and they used yeah. what they knew and what they had. Except the for real, Ryder. The, the only real magic they had was, um, was, uh, just, you know. Noble just phantasms. The, the, the noble phantasms. <laughs> and Caster. And I appreciate it, and I appreciate it, and I appreciate it. Well, yeah, well, Caster is a magic user. But yeah, that's even, the point even, of Caster. He, even he stood out because he was like a summoner. He wasn't just shooting fireballs like everyone else, you know? Hey man, um, shooting fireballs is fun. And, <laughs> I mean, I just want so, to see someone throwing and, fireballs. And so something, something I don't like that much about Fate Stay Night is, uh, is is that all of a sudden the the uh, the servant level, the, the servant fights have are more gotten, ridiculous. Have gotten to that same level of Dragon Ball Z ish, if not more, than the, than wow. the master fights in in Fate Zero, and and it's and it's beautiful and it's breathtaking and I love it, but, uh, I like seeing fights be down to earth too you know and so i'm glad that akatsuki no yona is is there to present me with that yeah a good like actual like nothing magical happening in the fight yeah so, except so, for that guy with the dragon hand later on uh, oh. uh, we're gonna get to that scene <laughs> but it's, it's but the the Hox fight you know with his naginata and, yeah. and, and that was that was a nice fight it was a nice fight. Oh, he probably should have was, killed Suwon. If he's as good a fighter as they said he was, was he kind of should have killed him in that fight. Whatever. I'm, I'm not going to complain. It was a uh, big scene. I, I got mean. it. I was happy. I did like how it how it showed how Hawk knew where to find her. Like, at the end of someone's one, it's like, he just, yeah. he just found her. He just well, happened the, the, to can't spawn this. This is the thing that really threw me off, right? It was It's basically the... The, the, the last first one third of the episode the, the, like, the, like the last like minute of episode one is kind of irrelevant because yeah. it's like this entire episode is like a third of this episode is directly link, leaning up to is, the, is, is, final is, the final minute of the first episode yeah right like, so it's, it's like so weird so like it's it, it's it feels like it was shoehorned in just so they could get the cliffhanger it's like yeah, so, we must so make sure can, they come so back next week get the cliffhanger and, and it kind of makes me think of like what episode two kind of basically pulled here too. Was like, was episode one just trying to kind of spoil episode two for you? Like the way yeah, like episode like. episode two's ending is like spoiling the future of the series as well. 
Because it's yeah, like, I didn't, me off. I didn't like that. I was like, what the fuck is, like, oh, where, where did all the time skip? Where did these guys come from? Like, I, I wanted a strong female protagonist. Yeah. I didn't want it this soon. I didn't want it to, like, I, I wanted it to be, like, episode six or something. Just... I don't want it to be, like, Cross Edge either. I do not want the Cross Edge cult character development. I don't know. I was, I, just, I was weird. I was just like, holy shit. I did like how, um... I don't know, actually, like, Sue Wan's reason. Like, you killed my dad. Like, uh, I'm going to be okay with it as long as he's not being manipulated. Yes, that, that's one thing that pissed me off. He's manipulated. He seems to be in charge of all of his guys. Yeah, because it's, it's... Kai... Kai... Kaisuke? Kaisuke? I think his name's Kaisuke. Yeah. Kaisuke. Um, All these Korean names are much harder to pronounce. Kai Suk. I don't like him. No, me either. Because I'm worried that he will be the main mastermind that's manipulating yeah. Suwon. I want Suwon to be... The mastermind. I want Suwon to be the mastermind. I want him to be the villain. I will be okay with his reasoning as long as... As long as, as, long as, he's, as he's not villain. manipulated. He's, yeah, the, he's as, the villain. As, as long as the series isn't lying to me. And I'm... And sometimes I like when series lie to me when it's like a good twist. Yeah. But, this, this but is if it's a, just this, this is a, this is a twist. This, this is if it takes from the um, this is this is gonna be stupid. I think um, I referred to it as the Naruto school of villains. You thought this? I was the villain. But it's actually this guy above me. It was the guy above him. The guy above him. It's like yeah. So Kai that's Su- not how you do villains. I don't like him either way because I don't like the idea of him manipulating Su Wan. If he is, if he is, because then, then that's gonna disappoint me. And then what he is right now is just he's like the, he, he's he does the nothing. exposition. He's the exposition dump character. Yeah, like is. so far he's done nothing to make him worth more than the normal soldier. So far, he's like, oh man, like Suwon wants to do this because I'm gonna tell you the design. reasons. And like, oh man, like, like Hox this because I'm going to give you the reasons now. And it's like, like it's the thunder, something of. Kuku or whatever the country's named. Kaisuke, I don't like him because he's exposition dump. That's, that's, that's all he exists to be right yeah. now, and if he's anything further in the future, all I can see him doing is not good things. Yeah. One of my favorite scenes in this episode was um, after Yona learned about her father do- killing Suwans and went grayscale. Like, there was just yeah, that one light next to She went to pale. Fast. No, like, the... S- the art oh, went dude. gray. I don't remember. It was just like bl- the one lantern. Just everything else was gray. It's like that's. It was just great looking. Oh, I, I remember that. I thought you were talking about little grayscale. No. Oh. Um, I, I also love the music during the big escape scene. Yeah, I, re- I really like the music to this show too. Like it's it. good music, which not the opening. No, I still like the opening's music. It's just. Uh, I just don't think the opening fits it enough. I don't think the animation matches it to be as epic as what the actual instrumental could be if it, if it just had better visuals to go with it. Um, also, I want to say when Min Su fucking put on the cloak and like how did it when he was the, he was the princess when he started running? I was just like he's this dead. Guy is the, yeah, it's, this he's guy dead. Gonna die. And then he died. I was like nailed it. I knew it. Hey, but at least they did an actual good case of survivor guilt. The one thing a Kame got killed can't do. Huh. <laughs> Actually, she's, she feels guilty that he got killed for her. Uh, Just so feels guilty that she couldn't tell her dad, thank you for all the crap for her birthday. I've still only seen like seven episodes of Kame got killed. It's, I've seen like eight. I, the, the, the thing that gets me about a Kame got killed is, is, is I, I enjoy it. It, it, gets, it gets a lot of hate for being really stupid, and I admit it is stupid, but it's a kind of stupid that I enjoy. The problem is, is it's humor got too much the same yes it's but not it's, it just doesn't try to do much different and like my, my biggest problem with that episode was that here's what my notes say and I quote did they just pull a log horizon season 2 for that final scene at the very end of the episode and they showed like that fight out of nowhere it better not have been a time skip. Yeah, I was I was worried about the time skip, but then the preview showed, and it was like, oh man, we're going back to like what we left you off on, and I'm like, so why didn't you just end the episode yeah. there? 
and in, instead of giving us this 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 time skipped fight scene that kind of spoils us on like four of the characters. Yeah. Let's get one guy's a dragon hand. You wish acknowledge well, that fact every I mean, episode. So, got so, a I mean, so, so, so much of this was established, right? Because I I saw the PV. I got it. Yeah. We, we saw these characters show up at the beginning of episode one. I got it, but like a lot of episodes tend to skip ahead to give you a little bit something to expect. Many don't. That's an episode one thing. So fast. Yes, you know? that's annoying. Like, let's take our time getting back there so that we can feel rewarded for our patience. I don't want episode three to skip ahead too, and then have episode four go back to what we left off on. And episode that'll get it's... really annoying quickly. It'll get really annoying quickly, and it's done it two episodes in a row now. We just didn't realize it. Yeah, I didn't realize it because we, did, we didn't know it was going to happen yet. That's about everything I have for Katsuki no Yona. Yep, me too. Like, that's uh, my biggest problem with it. It was just how it's being directed. Cliffhangers, how it's being directed. Forcing the cliffhangers just so we can get more, get more people watching. Yeah, yeah. It's besides that though. Still love the story. Uh, still it's, love the game. Yeah, like, it, it, it's good. It's just I don't like how it ends I, every episode. The, the last like minute to three minutes or so, you know, like, the way the way it always ends on something. A forced cliffhanger that doesn't need to be there. It, ex extremely so. I think we've just about covered everything I can think of for any of our shows. Um. Ooh, okay, 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 I got two questions. Hmm? What? Okay. Um, you remember watching Attack on Titan, right? Yeah. And everyone always said, like, that was extremely forced cliffhangers, too, because the show was so slowly paced, like, near the end of every episode, like, everything just dragged so they could end yeah. it on a cliffhanger. Would you rather see something like that? Like, would you rather see the show drag on its endings, or would you rather have it do the time skip stuff? Drag. Okay. Because it's, like, it felt like backtracking in this episode. Because we saw it. And then it was like eight minutes to build up to where it was. Instead yeah. of just slowing it down for like three minutes and cutting out a bit of the fluff in the middle. Episode one, you could have gotten most of that in. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I, I, I agree. It was, it, was, it, was, it was just something I was, I was curious about. Other, other question, uh, kind of, you know, just, just as pointless, but, but just, just getting some opinions out there. Um, all right, so... Shingeki no Bahamut's opening. Yeah. Uh, would you agree it feels slightly AMV-ish? Because it, it takes some clips from the show, even though the majority of it is uh, still not original footage, but just all taken from like the very first PV. Yeah, um, it does feel like an AMV, but at the same time, like I professionally made AMV. Yeah, like, so no like, crappy which, editing. It's so, synced like, to the music. So so my, my question is, is uh, have you seen... Op so like you've seen the opening for like Die Buster, right? Yeah. And and you've seen like the opening for like a like the second opening for Aquarian Evil, right? How they're all just kind of just clips and like they're not really trying to hide it. They're not really trying to. Except for one for Samurai Flamenco, it was literally just clips. It's like, it didn't even try. Yeah, it, it didn't even try. But it's but it's like it, it, at least like something like Die Buster or like a, the second opening to Aquarian Evil, they made something out of it. You know, yeah. but, but it didn't hide the fact that it was trying to reuse clips, kind of like what Bahamut's doing. It's it's sort of trying to hide it behind like a lot of flashy special filters. effects. Yeah, by, by a lot of filters. Like when so like, like, they pop out like they're in a storybook or something? Would you, would you rather see the way Bahamut does it more, or like the more straightforward way, like Die Buster or Evil does it? I, it depends on the scene that they're using for it for. Really. If it's an action scene, I'm fine with him just blatantly saying, yeah, we're reusing this clip. Like, and Captain Earth. They reused his transformation scene in the opening. I'm like, I'm okay with that. Because their information was awesome. Oh my it, god, Captain Earth! I n I never watched it beyond like episode like. It was bad. Three. Yeah. I but think. the transformation was amazing. But oh my god, yeah, it was the transformation scene like some of the best I've ever. All seen. the Voltron jokes I made. Actually, no, I don't even think it was some of the best. I like, I still think it actually was like the best transformation sequence I've ever seen. Yeah, it was. It was. Ever. It was beautiful. But like, it used that in the opening, and I'm like, I'm okay with that because it was a good scene. If it's just like people talking, I'm like. <laughs> you could have animated something new for that. That's my right. opinion on it. Same questions goes to the audience. Let's get some people involved here, you know. Some actual comments this time. Yeah. So, um, did, 
You said we actually got like a subscriber just from uploading our first episode. We got like two. And then me. Oh my god, I feel so sorry for you people. You actually bared to listen to that. Oh. <laughs> hey, feel sorry for me. I had to edit that thing. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel sorry for you too, alright? Imagine having that... It, it defaults to max audio. Uh. So you heard the quality. I put your bike at negative 30 decibels. Imagine that about 30% louder. I don't, know what I, happened. I, was... I don't know what happened. I, I mean... I sounded fine over Skype, right? Yeah, you sounded fine. I was picking up your snowball. Yeah, it was... It was Audacity I, got the I, wrong I, mic. Audacity got the wrong mic. Like, I I am so sorry, guys. Audacity got the wrong mic. I'm... And I, I stuck to my promise this episode. I didn't type a single thing other than my guess as to who Archer is. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm telling you right now, like, you don't have to censor that. And that I won't, won't already, I won't. And that probably... Actually, you kind of already answers your question. Um, that means it was no, not <laughs> Gawain. Um, I mean, so, I didn't figure it'd be Gawain because they already used Lancelot as a spoiler, as a uh, reveal. It's like, Gawain would just be, like, forcing it. Too much Arthur. Yeah, it's like, can we get someone else for a big reveal? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I had... There's, there's something about Fates to next. I have issues with it. Actually, the adaptions we're up to this point has actually, I think, done nothing but improvements. Um, so, like, the next thing I want to see them do is something related to, like, Saber's identity that I really hate. Um, that, it's, that I don't want them to do. And episode three, um, we'll see how um, how Shiro and Saber's conversation goes. Because I saw the PV for uh, episode... I keep calling it three. It's... Technically speaking, too. All of our shows are on the same episode, except uh, Unlimited Blade Works is one behind. Yeah. It's funny, because I said I didn't want to add Parasite to the list, because I didn't want it to be one behind. Yeah. Even though Unlimited Blade Works is. Unlimited Blade Works are in that. Um, Good job, Episode Zero. Thanks, Episode Zero. Eh. Um, but yeah, okay, so Episode 2 slash 3. Um, I saw the PV for it. Because there's an actual PV for it besides just like the next episode preview, uh, I didn't know what to make of it. I, I just saw kind of like Shiro and, and Saber shake hands, and I, I I don't know what that's gonna mean for um, the upcoming episodes. But I I hope Saber puts a little more trust in Shiro than like what she does in the original visual novel. Hmm. That's, that's all I can really say about it right now. I think we're about ready to wrap it up. You agree? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So next week we'll actually be reviewing Yamushi Petal, because we'll yeah, have finished next, it by then. Next week we'll have finished it. Uh, I, 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 I put it in the top right corner of this video. I'm on episode 18. Will is on episode 10. Yeah. So I got, a, I got a lot to go. Yeah. Uh, you got a little we'll, less we'll, than half. A little more than half to go. Yeah, but but we'll uh we'll we'll definitely get this uh. This, this will be done. out by Thursday at least, assuming this... Drake's internet's good enough to get it up. Yeah, because we uploaded it with my internet, and it took about fourteen hundred minutes. Your your internet sucks. My yours internet's... is twice my speed for uploading. My 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 internet may be may maybe twice as yours, but I know someone who's actually even like six, six times ti- yours. Six times mine. So it's like and twelve if, times and my if speed. Mine ends up sucking. Just as much as yours, I'm gonna recruit him. Mm. All right. Or I will at least do my fucking best to. Um. All right. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, okay. I will try. I'm not gonna make this a priority, but I'm going to work on um, fixing some of my audio issues with the first episode. So, uh, if I can get that down, and uh, we can like re re-upload episode one. All right, I'll I'll see if I can go back and edit it if you ever do, if you ever do. Uh, yeah, we'll 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 try to do that. Uh, don't I'm not making any promises, and I'm not really making it a priority. I'm trying to you know move forward with this. Mistakes happen. Yeah, um, it's just kind of a really bad one. Yeah, but uh, but besides that, this, this is this is the end of episode two, guys. Thanks for listening. Another two-hour podcast. Another two-hour podcast. I. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's going to be a theme, I, I, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, I, I think this is the way it's going to go, because we, we always have so much to say about, about this. This is why I love this more than Anacast. Anacast was just, like, our first 40 minutes was just rambling. That's all Anacast ever was. Rambles. That's because it, it was very unorganized. There were, like, five of us in a podcast at once. Five of us in a podcast at once, all trying to talk about what we're, what we're, like, watching at the time. Actually, I was thinking of one thing we could do. What? Maybe, like, uh... Occasionally have, like, a guest. Yeah. Like, a yeah. third member. Who we trust to have actual good opinions and not just joking about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. We can work on that idea later. And, um... I'm I'm also trying to think of a way how we can like make lists uh to determine like what shows we will review next yeah. so we don't do stuff as random as Yamushi Pedal. And we really chose that one cuz it's season 2 is airing right now. Well, I chose that one specifically because I wanted it to be a sports series, yeah. but I'll I will get uh into my positives and negatives with it uh next week and yeah. and why and you know why why I specifically chose it and what I'm kind of comparing it to and stuff like that. All right, I, I think we've rambled enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Bye, guys. Love you. Thanks. See you in for, a week. Thanks for being such a great audience. <laughs>